It being 6.34 p.m., I call this meeting of the Brockton Conservation Commission to order. The meeting is being conducted remotely in accordance with the extension of the governor's order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the Conservation Commission utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. If you wish to comment during a public input portion of the hearing, please use the raise your hand function to be addressed at the appropriate time. For those of you joining by phone only, please press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done by a roll call vote to ensure count accuracy. Please note that discussion of agenda items should be limited to 15 minutes each to ensure timely progress through the agenda. For purposes of quorum and for purposes of roll call votes, I would like all commissioners please to state their first and last name. Laura B. Clark here. Peggy Curtis here. Sharifa, I believe you're going to be a voting member tonight. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, Sharifa Mapp here. And Joyce Boris here. So with four of the five members present, we have quorum. And the meeting can begin. First item on the agenda is the acceptance of uh, minutes from the June 21st meeting. Um, does anyone have any kind of edits or questions or concerns? Did all members have a chance to read the minutes? Peggy, wait, did you have time to read the minutes? Okay. If so, then I would entertain a motion, please, to accept the minutes as read. I make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from 621-23. I second the motion. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. B. Clare, aye. Curtis, aye. Matt, aye. And Voris, aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, I do just want to make a quick announcement. There were four continuances, in case anyone is here from the public. Um, for number 12, 455 Oak Street, which is the Fuller Craft Museum. Number 19, 940 Belmont Street, the VA fueling um, project. Number 21, 549 Copeland Street. And number 22, 710 Oak Street. Those four um, projects will be discussed. They've been continued actually to the next meeting, which will be August 16th, I believe, correct? Yes, that's correct, Madam Chair. Okay, so those meeting those um, will be followed up next month and are not really on this agenda right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll start first with violation discussions. Uh, we start with a 30 Oak Street extension project. So if Agent Holden could um, give us an update, please. Yeah, sure. Actually, we have um, the, uh, I guess not really applicant, but uh, a representative uh, from uh, that, uh, the Hamilton company here, uh, Olga Leroy, to give us an update. Mm -hmm. um, and Olga, I've promoted you, so you should be able to speak. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Olga. Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, so the update is I'm still waiting for the landscaper. There's, it should be done. She said it was going to be done by next week. She's waiting for flowers. I'm I'm wondering what is there a certain kind of flowers that we had to get that what's taken her so long because she said she had to order them and she was waiting for those and then they should be in by at least by next week. She's going to give me an update this week. So I Olga, like the only um, thing that we had to wait for was flowers. Right, so you submitted a, a remediation plan, and this is on the drive for any of the commission members that mm -hmm. want to check this out. Um, so they may just be waiting for the individual, uh, you know, flowers that they have listed in this plan. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, none of these are specifically required by us, other than just having it like be a, a native wildflower kind of stabilization mix. So uh, anything above and beyond that is, you know, up to you. But yeah, we're not requiring any any specific flowers here. Okay, so because I was wondering, because she said she was waiting, she ordered these flowers, she's waiting for them to come in. 
and she, of, of course, like across the board, she's been shorthanded. So she's still waiting for them, but she said she'll give me an update this week. And then by next week, I'm hoping that everything is done because we've already started the project. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, Olga, I, I think that um, I think as far as the commission is concerned, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, commission uh, members, but uh, the, the big thing that we're concerned about is just stabilizing that that ground that, that's been right. uh, disturbed uh, around there. So even if they don't have like the large flowers that they're going to plant into that area, if you get the uh, the wildflower or the the, the native um, uh, like northeast native seed mix and get that down and, and seeded, I think that's the, the big thing the commission is concerned with. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly I can, right. Um, I can let them know that, you know, because I think that's what she was waiting for. So I'll let them know. That's why I was going to ask you all, is there something else that I could, you know, move this along? So I will let them know that. Okay. Commissioners, any questions at all? No. Okay. Um, so Ms. Leroy, what do we, do we expect to see you next month or Kyle, do you want to take a visit to just take a look at the project or how do you want to? Yeah, I think, you know, Olga, if you get that seated, you can just shoot me an email and I can go out and take some photos. Um, and then hopefully, you know, I, I, again, I think as long as that area is uh, uh, stabilized with, with yeah. the seed, I think that, you know, at that point we can maybe close this out. So um, yeah. yeah, let's just, let's plan on, you know, we'll, we'll this will be on the agenda next month and hopefully we'll have some photos and everything will be okay stabilize and we can move move forward yeah it may okay. take a few weeks i think but well to get established for sure. yeah, yeah to absolutely. Get established. so yep yeah okay okay Good. thank you miss lebar appreciate it thank, thank you, you so much for your co cooperation all right thank you have a good okay. day everybody. okay thank you next item on the agenda is 155 um Goldfinch Drive, I believe we had talked about the possibility of some kind of a wetland delineation by this month or some type of action. Uh, yeah, that's correct. So uh, at the at the meeting in uh, June, we kind of talked about kind of a, a kind of a plan over the next couple of months. Uh, the first thing was we wanted a full wetland delineation, which uh, they uh, the applicant basically had already. Um, so they supplied that to me, and that is now uh, in the Google Drive that we can check out. The next step is that they will be filing a notice of intent um, for uh, to, to, to remove some of that construction that crossed over into the wildlands area, and then to do any sort of remediation that's required uh, for the encroachment on uh, the flood zone and the wetland on the north side of the property. So is anyone um, here for the applicant? Well, I'm not, I mean, uh, uh, attorney uh, Burke is here. I'm not sure if he's wanting to speak to this or not. I, I don't know that it's necessary. Like they are on target as far as, uh, you know, with the deadlines that we set for them. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I just kind of wanted to give you guys that update uh, as the commission. Uh, and then I can follow up with, uh, with with all of them that are involved with this project to make sure that we're on board or uh, on pace for next month to have some sort of filing. Okay, now will they be doing an after the fact? NOI? I believe that's the that's the that's the plan here. Yep. With remediation. Yeah. Okay. And then do you know what the date of was went from the, the, the wetland delineation? Do you know when that was actually done? I can look. Let's see. I have one quick question. Is it 115 goldfinch or is it 155? I'm sorry, it's 155. Okay. Because in the share drive, it says 115. So I just figured it was the same thing. Okay. I think it is. I thought it was 115. Yeah, so did I. Let me look at the letter. Yeah, it's 115 goldfinch. So it's just on the agenda. Okay. Okay. All right. Since agendas have been posted, can they be re can they be edited like after the fact, you know, to make sure that that, I wonder, do you know, Road? <laughs> I, I think we can do an amendment. I'm not sure what the legal is. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think it, it might just be something that's captured in the meeting minutes. Yeah. I think okay. that kind of suffices to, clar to clarify a um, good question. Okay, so we'll make sure that that does get into the minutes. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and then, uh, Madam Chair, the date on this uh, wetland delineation is August 4th of 2021. 2021. Mm -hmm. August 4th of 2000. Oh, I thought they were going to have a fairly new one. August 24th. 
Yeah, I think they just they just had this. This was already previously done, and we just didn't have access to this before. So they just provided me this this old delineation. Mm -hmm. Were we going to expect a new R one, or are they? Well, I mean, I guess that's up for to the commission to decide if you. I mean, I think these are good for three years, isn't that right, Elise? Yeah, okay. yeah, three years is generally um, consistent, okay. and as part of the NOI review, that can kind of include just, you know, look, looking over the line. Making uh, sure that well. it's yeah. correct still. Okay, yeah. that's great. Thank you very much for that. Okay, good. So then I, we would expect to just expect some forward movement on um, and after the fact NOI by next month, correct? That's correct, yep. Okay, commissioners, any questions? Okay, and if that is not available, I think we were going to go forward with an enforcement order at that time. If yes, that's was kind of the language that was used last month. Yep. Okay, good. Just to, just for clarification to make sure we're all understanding. Thank you. Okay, um, the next violation discussion was one fifty five um, Winthrop Drive. Uh, yeah, so and I kind of have an update here, um, just as a quick recap for the commission members. Um, this is the property that they uh, they basically extended the pavement from their drive all the way back to the fence at the end of the property that that abuts uh, an intermittent stream. Um, the way that we left this last month was that I was going to reach out to uh, the, the the zoning board and uh, the city engineer um, to check with stormwater ordinance. Um, and then um, there's also a language barrier with the owners of this property. So the best way for us to communicate with them is via letter. So we're going to have a discussion tonight about what I've you know, learned, and, and then we're going to maybe come up to some, some decisions. And then I will relay that information uh, to uh, the homeowners uh, via mail, and uh, then we'll kind of go from there. So um, as, as we've kind of mentioned before, our issue is that they, they've kind of paved up within the 25 foot, like uh, no, no touch buffer zone of the intermittent stream. Um, but again, so I did, I checked with the, the uh, well, uh, I talked to Ken Galligan. He's a, a, a longstanding member of the, the zoning board. And he pointed me towards the, the, the ordinance uh, that's, that's uh, appropriate in this, in this um, case. And basically there's a, Rob May uh, was concerned that there's a certain threshold of like open space that's required to be maintained in a residential uh, lot. Um, and I think that this lot, even as it stands currently meets that minimum threshold. So if we require them to do any sort of uh, uh, removal of any of this uh, asphalt that's been there, it's definitely gonna be uh, within the, uh, uh, the minimum standards of the, the zoning ordinance. So I don't think that's something that we need to concern ourselves with. However, um, I did speak with the city engineer today um, about the stormwater ordinance, and um, he said that any new construction under the new city ordinance, um, it's there's a stricter standard here than versus the state uh, stormwater standards. So the city standards is, like basically say that um, you not only have to not make the problem any worse uh, as far as runoff goes, but you actually have to improve infiltration when you do one of these projects. And I think the, the threshold for the city is there's a 40% uh, you know, uh, runoff reduction that's required by the city. So um, according to, you know, to be in compliance with the, uh, the city uh, stormwater ordinance, uh, the applicant uh, would have to, uh, or the homeowner would have to do quite a bit of work to, uh, to as far as doing infiltration systems to make this, this, this pavement uh, in compliance with the stormwater ordinance. Um, so that's kind of where we are. We kind of have two competing, um, you know, conflicts here. There's the, there's the conservation commission, you know, uh, or, you know, becoming in compliance with, with our uh, regulations. And then there's also the stormwater thing. Um, so, I guess at this point, um, it's kind of up to the commission how we want to move forward with this. Um, you know, I can communicate both of those, you know, standards. Um, and then, you know, I think the easiest thing for them to do is, I mean, it's going to be expensive to uh, to get this in compliance with the city's uh, stormwater ordinance. Um, but again, that's up, that's up to them, uh, you know, how they want to proceed with this. Um, I guess one final comment uh, is that the city stormwater ordinance is kind of in flux right now. Um, there's talk of either repealing it entirely or, um, or you know, developing a new stormwater ordinance for the city. Um, so that would, you know, I think as it stands now, city council will be making a vote on this at some point in the future. Um, there's definitely talk of, of repealing this ordinance. 
Um, the city of Brockton is required to have some sort of stormwater ordinance on the books though. So whatever the city council decides to do, uh, they will have to get like approval from uh, Mass uh, e uh, Environmental Protection Agency. Um, so it's gonna be a long process. I don't know, there's a lot of uncertainty, I guess is what I'm saying with a stormwater ordinance. Um, and I can communicate that in the letter to the homeowner, but uh, you know, I, I think for us, um, we just we're concerned about you know that setback uh, in terms of the Wetlands Protection Act, and then beyond mm -hmm. that, I guess that's up to them and you know how the Stormwater Authority wants to handle this. Mm -hmm. Ms. Tripp or or Mr. Holden, uh, exactly what would be required for them to remediate? Yeah, so uh, Elise and I have spoken about this, and I, I think and Elise, please chime in if uh, um, if you have anything else to add. But I think the uh, the easiest thing to do here is just to rip up twenty five foot back from the existing fence line, um, and it, to be to be in compliance with the Wetlands Protection Act. Now that would still not be in compliance with the Brockton Stormwater uh, Ordinance. Uh, but as far as the Wetlands Protection Act goes, uh, if they if they remove that that uh, asphalt back twenty five feet. Uh, from the, the existing fence line, I think, and then, and then obviously seed it. Um, I think at that point, as far as we're concerned, you know, it's in compliance with uh, the Conservation Commission. Yeah, I, I do want to clarify too. So as, as far as the Wetlands Protection Act goes, there's no like official setback. I know historically in the Brockton uh, Conservation Commission regulations, it's a, it's a generally try to abide by a 25 foot no touch. So the way to kind of think about how the commission wants to address it is, if they hadn't done this work, what would the commission have approved? Um, and, and it could be something that the commission would find it reasonable that they, they could hypothetically have paved, say, up to that 25 foot and then, you know, asked for a certain restoration or, or, or something on that end. So that's kind of a good way to think about how or what you would uh, require. Mm -hmm. So as far as the Wetlands Protection Act goes, um, there is no official setback it's more of just in general work within the buffer zone as you as it gets more concerning as you get closer to the resource area but going by the Brockton regulations traditionally it's that 25 foot no touch so that's that um, could be a way to meet the performance standards under the wetlands protection act uh, while also not imposing you know as big of a cost as maybe ripping up the whole thing that's that's kind of up to the commission on determining how the work has has impacted the area and what um, could be done to help protect and, you know, like infiltration with having uh, vegetation would be good. That would kind of help provide treatment for stormwater and also prevent uh, less of a sheet flow towards that area. So mm -hmm. that would be kind of the, the considerations, I think, as far as what the commission wants to require. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, any questions? Oh, no, I don't have any. I agree with that argument that we can only look at the wetland part. I think that that's reasonable. I just feel bad if they can pull later on go and rip up the rest too, because that. That's yeah. Awesome. But well, so I mean, when I reach out, I'm going to communicate that the rest of that is not in compliance with the current stormwater ordinance, and then that's something that they can decide how they want to proceed with the rest of that. You know, that's kind of how I think we should frame that. Yeah, but I still would expect a plan to come before us, correct? A, a specific plan, um, with Definitely. yeah, um, some kind of remediation for that area and protection as well. If when they're going through and ripping everything up, I would expect they'd have to have some kind of um, some kind of protection for any yeah, runoff or anything. Yeah. yeah, erosion. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So should we proceed then? Requesting an NOI, or would it be better, or should we process it as an enforcement order? Or because up till now everything has just been a violation discussion, correct? Yeah. And so I've not issued an enforcement order at all. So this is just uh, we issued a violation a notice, and that's that's the extent of uh, on the administrative side so far. Right. Is it? Is anyone here from from the party? Uh, I didn't ask them to be um, because. Okay. There's yeah, that's right. You were going to write. Issue, that's so right. I'm just going to communicate whatever right. we decide here. And obviously they can respond back to me and have an input here, but um, I'm just planning on sending them a letter in the mail. Okay. And I think that if that's the means of communication, I, I think that we can continue this as actually issuing the enforcement officially, like this is an enforcement order and this is how you're going to fix it. 
getting into making them submit a plan and everything, if I feel like sometimes that might be more confusing to them, we can try to get them to submit a plan. But if the idea is just to get it rectified and move back quickly, or you know, for them to be very direct, whatever we're asking them to do from our end, probably. Would they need a plan though, if in order to remediate, if they were going to pull everything up? You know what I mean? If you if you wish an enforcement order, isn't it a plan that's needed to be able to lift that enforcement order? So it's not necessarily a, a plan that's needed. Basically, an enforcement order will remain open until whatever is asked for in the enforcement order okay. is addressed. Um, okay. So, you know, if 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 the commission does ask for, say, an after the fact filing um, for, for something like this, that would be you would want a plan showing um, where things are, you know, where erosion controls are going to go, where they're going to, how they're going to be removing things, stockpiling of that material before removal, or, you know, some of those details would be important to have on a plan, um, I would say. Kyle, is it normal that we could help them with that, navigating that process, like give them recommendations who to reach out to? <laughs> I mean, you got to think how daunting that is to somebody who has no idea. Sure. You know, the the problem is, uh, you know, you want to avoid favoritism, you know, right. I suggesting yes. certain, yes. you know, uh, uh, people to do that work. So right. I think the best that we could do is maybe provide like a list of people that do those services and they can choose yes. from the list. Okay. Um, but that's not something that I have readily available. So I'd have to put that list together. I was just even thinking if we told them kind of what to Google. <laughs> do you want to look oh, yeah, sure. Certainly I could just see them yeah, being like, some guidance uh, there. yeah. Yeah, a little guidance, of course, not suggesting anything specific, but like, hey, this is where you could go find some answers, because I can imagine that's very confusing. So, yeah, sure. Mm. So is the decision basically that we want to issue an enforcement order requiring a remediation plan uh, to have that 25 foot setback? And then uh, we'll just kind of go from there. Is that the idea? I think that I'm, sounds reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Commissioner City. Other questions or comments? Okay. So I move to make a motion um, to have uh, the owner remove 25 feet from the existing uh, fence, remove 25 feet of asphalt as um, per the regulations for the wetlands um, regulations. So will you move then to um, to issue an enforcement order that would require yes. that? Yes, an enforcement order, sorry. Mm -hmm. okay. To remove the 25 feet of asphalt from the fence. As so per the wetland regulations. So the uh, do the enforcement orders usually say this is what we expect to for you to do to fix it? Or is it just this is what the problem is? I think we can put language in there that says to 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 rectify the situation. These are the steps that you need to take. Submit a plan. Okay. The plan needs to have you know twenty five foot setback from the you know so all that can be included in the enforcement. Okay, program. that would be great. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Thank you. Do I need to amend that or re um, remake the motion? No, I don't think so. I think you're you you move to issue an enforcement order that includes um, returning at least 25 feet set back away from the property boundary, right? Mm -hmm. Or from the wetland boundary. I think that's oh. fine. Mm -hmm. and I so with your motion, yeah. okay, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, roll call vote, please. Speak where I. Curtis, I. Map, I. And for us, I. Motion carries. So you'll send that out, right, Kyle? Yes, I will do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so speaking of enforcement orders, um, that brings us to number five on the agenda. It's 19 Otis Street. Uh, I believe in the last minutes, it mentioned that we wanted to have some kind of a plan in place for a delineation or remediation of the pergola on the river. I believe. Uh, yes, that's correct. And I see someone has their hand raised to speak to this. I'm going to promote them. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, hello. Um, Hi. Speak. Yes, this is, uh, I'm with the landlord of 19 Oldest Street, Mr. Resende. Yeah. And, and your name? I know, I know that, um, I think Kyle went by, but I wasn't there to assist. So I don't know what took place. So they, I guess he was supposed to wait for a letter. So, yeah, I can speak to this. So, um, uh, after I think it may have been the the May meeting was the last time that this kind of we had this discussion on this topic here at, at one of our meetings. And after that meeting, uh, I met with uh, Mr. Rezende um, on site uh, with uh, a person from the building department to help translate. Um, and we kind of went over what language was in the uh, enforcement order that was sent. And then also we went over uh, what the next steps uh, are required um, from the enforcement order. Um, up to and including uh, developing a, a remediation plan. Um, and so that was around two months ago. So the commission, um, then I sent out a follow-up letter on June 7th, 27th, um, requesting that uh, you know someone uh, representing him come to the meeting tonight to uh, talk about uh, what steps have been taken uh, just to keep the commission up to date um, as far as how this process is, is developing. Okay, um, I don't believe he has started anything because he's he doesn't know what to do or who to contact like in like a license engineer or wetland he doesn't know who to contact so he hasn't started any process. So Kyle when you spoke with him did did you um, spe specify what steps he had to take. Yeah, we just we went over what was the language that was in the enforcement order so yeah we, okay. we kind of went over everything at that time yes okay i'm probably going to explain it to him again so he needs to hire a licensed engineer or wetland to come over and take a look to figure out how to remove yeah basically the the, the goal here is to return that that area basically yes. back to how it was before uh the the, the construction happened so uh, a, a certified professional is going to need to go out there on site um and and see what what it looks like now and then also they will be the ones that develop the plan to to restore it back to how it was originally. So yeah, he will have to hire an individual to to do that work for you. And then then you can submit that plan to the commission. Uh, the commission will then uh, you know ask for any modifications as necessary. They will approve the plan and then work can commence. Oh, okay. Um, do you guys have any list of the people that do that does that? Um, and then this just came up in the last segment too, but um, you know, it, it's not really our place to recommend individuals to do this work um, because that's not like a fair thing, you know, that would, that would, uh, that could be wow. seen as favoritism. So uh, yeah. So he has to go out and look on his own. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The, 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 my, my recommendation is you can just like Google, Google like yeah. these things and just like Brockton, blah, blah, blah. And, and yeah. you know, hopefully find something there. Um, okay. Mr. Holden, what would you put in for blah, blah, blah? Would you put in environmental no. engineer or would you put in environmental yeah, there, and this, this language is all in the enforcement order. So there's kind of a list. Yeah, of it, says a, it says a licensed environmental engineer or wetland scientist. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you can just search e any of those terms, you know, put in Brockton, Massachusetts, and then hopefully you'll find people that, that do that kind of work that are, you know, at least somewhat local uh, and then, you know, contact them and then they could, they could start developing a plan or at least, you know, give you a quote and then you can shop around if necessary. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you hold on one second? I think he has a question. Yeah, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. He said he just doesn't feel like um why he has to, you know, take everything down because last a couple of days ago when it was raining, the, the river gets really high. So usually it comes like in the property. And that was the reason why he did it in the first place. So he just not understanding why he has to remove it. He understands about, I think, the cement that he did, but does he have to remove the whole wall too? I don't know how it looks because I haven't, I haven't been there. 
Yeah. So I think that I'm not sure how, what, what, what it looked like before uh, this was built. Yeah. I'm not sure what, what, what kind of, uh, you know, structure was there to kind of keep the river from over going bounds initially. So I, I can't really speak to how that was before, but um, there, there are a couple of reasons that this needs to, to, to be addressed here. So first off, um, it's not on property that he owns. This is on city property. So that's, that's one complication. Yeah. Uh, secondly, um, you know, I understand that, that there has been flooding issues on, on the property um, by building kind of basically a retention wall and confining that stream, uh, you're kind of taking away water storage capacity of the creek and then you, that, that can cause more flooding downstream. So while that might solve his problem, that's making people that, that live downstream making, yeah. it's making flooding on their properties worse. So that's why okay. um, we can't just allow this to, to, to stay the way that it is. Okay. All right, I'll explain it to him. And an environmental engineer would certainly be able to help you come up with solutions, I'm Plan. sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you for helping. All right, bye. Okay. So that, oh. Oh, so we expect, do we expect to have, so you, we expect to have something by next month, do you think? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Um, I can kind of follow up with this again and just kind of make sure things are moving along and we'll hopefully have another report next month. Okay, thank you. The next item under enforcement orders is 82 Ames Street. Um, Kyle, yes, I believe you sent a history. It was like a history of what had occurred on that site. Yeah, that's correct. I've got a couple of people here that are uh, here to speak to this as well. Um, okay. So basically, the way that we left this uh, last uh, last month was um, uh, Robert and Bob here uh, both were on and they spoke to us about kind of the enforcement history of, of the property. Um, I was kind of unaware of that being the new agent. So I went back and kind of just confirmed um, all of you know, what was said there. And I kind of wrote up a report. I sent that to these two and then also to the commission. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of so we're all kind of clear as far as like the history of, of, of enforcement with this site. Um, and then uh, basically, we also spoke about uh, and I've been in communication with the, uh, the two of them as well about what our next steps should be. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I guess kind of what we've decided, um, and I, I'll let them speak to this in a moment if they have anything else to add. But um, the, so there are kind of two separate issues on this site. There's one, uh, an enforcement order was issued by me about uh, clearing around that stone line channel. Uh, in the property. And then there's an, an older uh, enforcement order that was issued uh, for uh, kind of making a, 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 a paved uh, like parking area within flood zone. So there are kind of two different resource areas that we're concerned with and kind of two mm -hmm. different enforcement orders. Um, so after the initial enforcement order about the pay or not the pay, but the, 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 the um, channel. Well, not, not, not the channel, the, the, the kind of the, the parking area. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, there yeah. was a, a notice of intent that was filed, but that didn't ever go anywhere. So we have to rectify both of these things. Um, yep. But I think the next step is, and they've agreed to that this is probably the, the best way to go about this is to first, before we move forward with uh, an after the fact notice of intent to uh, deal with the parking area, uh, we need to define uh, whether that that stone line channel is jurisdictional uh, for, you know, with with the Brockton Conservation Commission, or if it is not a jurisdictional stream. So uh, the, the next step I think is for them to file a, a, an RDA um, requesting that uh, there be a determination on whether that, that stone line channel is jurisdictional. So I guess, um, you know, uh, Robert, Bob, if either of you have anything to, to add, you're welcome. Yeah, I don't know if, um... Can you guys see me? This is Bob Rigo from Riverhawk Environmental speaking. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not getting the video for some reason, but that's okay. Um, now we have no audio. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize for that. Uh, we, we hired uh, Brad Holmes from um, Environmental Consulting and Restoration to go out there and, and see what he could find in terms of wetland resource areas. So he did go out there um, between last meeting and this meeting. Um, he did not find any wetland vegetation along that that uh, that channel or culvert or or stream, whatever it might be. Um, it's just a rock line armored channel um, that ex extends um, from more culverting that occurs to the to the west. 
Um, but it does start off as a stream. Uh, um, there is some, some uh, intermittent stream, which is upgrading to that. So it does look like it's probably gonna be a jurisdictional area. Um, we, we did find a plan which shows a connection of that stream to the, to the stormwater drainage system and then ultimately uh, across the property. So whether or not it's riverfront or not, it does appear at this point like it is jurisdictional. Um, so we, we'd like to file an RDA as, as um, uh, Kyle said, we'd like to file an RDA, RDA excuse me, establish the, the resource areas that we're dealing with and then file the after the fact um, notice of intent for, for the work that's been done or any future work that, that we'd like to do on the property. And that's Sounds uh, reasonable. It's clear. Okay. Commissioners, questions? Now, did you say that Mr. Holmes said that it possibly was jurisdictional? Y yes, it, it is possibly jurisdictional. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. There, there's no there's no vegetation, but there, right. there, there is some upgrading right. wetland areas which occur a half mile right. away. Which right. would then make it a an intermittent stream or or riverfront or, mm -hmm. or river, yeah river mm -hmm. right. okay okay good that seems reasonable to me um, would you expect the um, the RDA request to come through yet you haven't filed it yet correct we have not filed it yet as of yet and um, you will be shortly I assume uh, yes we could. Um, we could have it prepared and filed by the end of next week. I don't, I don't know what your schedule is for the, for the appearance at the next meeting, but um, how far in advance you would need that um, information. But we might have to go, you know, two meetings away just to give us some time to uh, to prepare that request. So, Bob, just for your information, the, the RDA application itself isn't uh, like a very stringent document that you necessarily need. Well, I guess if you're trying to, you're, you're making an argument, so I guess you want to include all documentation that's relevant. So I'll, 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 I'll step that back. Never mind. Yeah, it still is. You still have to notify and stuff. So I don't yeah. know. I mean, we can, we, we can get it done. Like I said, by the end of next week, it's just a matter of workload, really. Just, just yeah. you know, fitting it in and, and completing it, making sure it's in if we have a deadline to get it in, um, th that would be the only thing. So like I said, we can have it in by the end of next week. What meeting we get on, that will be up to you. Sure, the uh, the filing deadline, just so you're aware, uh, for the August 16th meeting is Wednesday, August 2nd. Okay, so we we'll be able to meet that, no no problem. Okay, good, so we'll, we will see you next month then. Okay, Th thank you very much, appreciate your time. Good. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. The next item on the agenda is, is it 603 Crescent Street? Is Mr. Silva here? Yeah, 803, yep. Oh, 803, I'm sorry, I wrote over my, I wrote over my uh, number here. Okay, thank you. I've uh, promoted uh, Mr. Silva so he can speak. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Silva. Can you hear me now? We can, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm How here. Um, so far, so good. How are you guys? Fine, thank you. So, Mr. So, uh, Silva, would. Uh, yes, uh, I talked to the to the company that did the plan before, um, the JK Holmgren Engineering. Right. And they and they uh, give me um, a proposal, uh, but only problem now is uh, is I'm on a tight budget. Um, I would like to ask the commissioner for more time if that's possible, because uh, I'm not the one that violate. I don't know if there's any chance to bring the previous owner to any of these meetings to justify why he did it. Um, but. Uh, I purchased the property through the SBA because I'm just an entrepreneur. I'm not a rich guy. And uh, I spent more than was what I was expecting. And now this comes up to almost $16,000, over $16,000 just for the plan. 
which right now my business has been in Broughton for only five months and is not generating any income. Uh, on the opposite, is losing about $4,000 a month. Uh, I don't know for how long I'm going to keep the door open. So I'm just asking for more time if it's possible. Um, for either or, I was even thinking about removing the pavement, but that's going to cost as well. So uh, I'm not in a position of doing anything right now. So mm -hmm. I would like to ask for an extension or something in that nature. Okay, I've got a couple of comments, if that's okay. Oh, please yes. do, please do, Mr. Okay. Um, so first, uh, uh, Mr. Silva, appreciate your 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 willingness to to work with the commission. Um, mm -hmm. My first comment, I guess, I would say, I wouldn't like to 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 do nothing at this point is is better than just to, to rip up anything that's there. So that like to rip up that the, the new pavement, we would also want some sort of plan involved there. So like rather than just doing that, I would just not not rip up anything until we kind of develop what the actual approved next steps are going to be. So that's point point number one. Uh, number two is um, you know, I, so I know you you've got that kind of this quote. Uh, one uh, one option is you can potentially kind of shop around a little little bit and see if any mm -hmm. other um, you know engineering firms or, or wetland special scientists can, can give you kind of a better deal as far as mm -hmm. like the, the cost for for this remediation plan. Um, and then thirdly, um, you, we can like help you with the filing of the notice of intent when and if we come to that. So I, I, I did see the, the quote that you provided us. Uh, that was a, a portion of that uh, cost was uh, filing the notice of intent. So that's something that, that you and I can work with, uh, work together to kind of do that portion. Um, and that mm -hmm. would be uh, reduce the overall cost to you. So those are kind of my three, three comments. Mr. Silva, how um, do you know when the actual pavement occurred? When the actual paving occurred? That was just before you purchased, is that correct? Uh, yeah, it was just before. I think uh, the the license commission uh, wanted the, the lot striped. Um, and then they decided to reseal the lot and they extend a little portion that go towards the river. So it was really the previous owner that actually do the actual um, pave, paving and striping. Uh, yes. And he told me that the portion was paved at some point because that was where the tank was. That's where the what was? The bank? The, the gas tanks. Yeah. He said that, oh. that portion was paved at one time. The whole thing was paved because that the tank was located on that on the area. Was it a gas to, station? Was it a gas yeah, station at one time? Yeah, it was a gas station before. Oh, I've always yeah, known yeah. it as a used car dealership and a, you know. Uh, yeah, really... the, yeah, it was a gas station before and they did a cleanup. Uh, actually, we had all the paperwork for the cleanup and everything. Mm. Um, as far as including the previous owner, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I understand that that would be much more fair to you, um, mm -hmm. but it might be something that you might want to, I don't know, um, pursue. I, I, but I think that would have to be you that would pursue that, I think. To go talk to him and and see what he can do about it or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think what, I think what uh, the, uh, uh, what, what uh, Chairperson Joyce here uh, is is kind of suggesting is that like we as the Conservation Commission aren't able to uh, to to enforce any regulation upon the previous owner since you're the current owner of this property, um, right. and if there you know was injury here in this case that that maybe you could pursue like legal action to to to, to offset the cost to you personally for the work that was done before. But again, that's not something that the Commission can get involved in. Right. Um, right. Is that kind of okay? Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's why I was asking for for more time so I can figure some. What is the next step? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because Peggy, uh, did you have a, a comment? Um, I was curious. Aren't there markers? Or was the previous owner aware of um, you know the the markers that should have been there? 
he was in that property for 37 years, so he probably should know better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kyle, mm -hmm. do you know if there were any markings there? Uh, yeah, I kind of came into this after the enforcement order was already issued. So I, I, I don't know what kind of information the previous owner had before they, they did the work. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you know if historically there was anything else on this property at all at any time? Kyle, as uh, far as any kind of um, anything for conservation historically? Uh, um, that I've seen no. in, in the, the files that we have. Nothing. But... No. Yeah, no. Yeah, I was, it... uh, when I was working with the SBA to get a loan, they require so many paperwork that was not even funny. But yeah. we, they submit everything. It's just this one for the conservation land that I don't know, I don't understand why uh, he violated. It, it is a very, not... it's right on the river. Yeah. It really is right on the river. So, I, you know, yeah. it's not anything that we can turn away and say, well, that's okay. We, you know, I mean, it's yeah. a pretty delicate area. Yeah, I captured a video during the, the flash flood warning. Oh. Yeah, showing like uh, where the, the water is actually going on the property. That's a, a river coming from the street into the property and going to the into the, the brooker, the, the beaver brook. I think that probably is something you would definitely want to show any environmental scientists that would come. Uh, would yeah, think. yeah, probably. It was like a lot of water coming down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So what, uh, Commission, any thoughts on what, how to move forward with this? Commission and also Elise, Kyle, what do you, what would you recommend? Oh, um, well, one moment, uh, Joyce, we have a person that has a hand raised. Let's see, I guess I can promote them, see. Is that yeah, public is public is welcome to speak, of course. Sure. Could you identify yourself, please? Six one seven nine five seven. Okay, well, I'm just gonna demote them again if they have something to say they can always raise yeah. their hand again it could have been an accident who knows yeah right. i don't um, think we so i would say um you know i think that it's reasonable at this point uh to to kind of give an extension here um and, and you know allow uh, mr silva some time to uh shop around um yes. and and try to try to you know find something that's more within his budget mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and perhaps you, you could yeah, yeah. Perhaps Kyle, you could also go through that um, the NOI process as well. Sure. Yeah, I can. I can stop by sometime maybe next week, uh, Bruno, and we can kind of talk about the notice of intent portion of of, of this. Of the no, okay, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Silver, do you have any idea who did the actual paving? Um, no, it was done through them. Uh, it was done to them. Uh, I'm not sure who did it. Okay, that's just curious. Okay, well, thank you so much for attending. And um, what what say we? Maybe another sixty days? Would that be unreasonable? Or do you think that's too much time? Because it is it is a fairly delicate area, and and it is. Well, uh, I would say report back at the next meeting to see what kind of progress has been made so that we know that there is progress being made and then expect a finalization or determination at the end of 60 days, I think would be reasonable. Okay. That sounds fair to me. Laura, Sharifa. And I, I was going to suggest a 60 day extension. I think the 30 day check-in is what, how we should identify it as, as a check-in. Um, it's just something mm -hmm. to let us know that there's, for the record, that there's progress each month. Being mm -hmm. made. Um, so thanks for your honesty and where you're at, um, Mr. Silva. I know it's hard and I get Thank it, you. but yeah, I would say that a check-in would be nice in the next meeting on the 16th. Yeah. 
Um, and so then, you know, then we go. I'm also going to be working with Kyle back and forth and uh, see if uh, we can probably get a better solution for this. I'm going to start doing some more research and getting some more proposal. As yeah. soon as I get them, I'm going to submit it to him and you know, good. we can go from there. It yes. sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Good. Thank you so much for being so um, cooperative too. It's a difficult situation to be in. Yeah, it is. Um, mm -hmm. And thank you for, for the extension. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. So with, there's nothing that needs to be, no motions that need to be made or anything, correct? Because it's an enforcement order that we're just continuing. Okay. Everybody's comfortable with that? Okay, next on the agenda, let's see, is zero Lawton Street. This is a new enforcement order, is that correct? Uh, yeah, so the next four are... Um, new enforcement order. So uh, Edson Lopez is uh, the current owner of this property. And then I've also promoted uh, a Christian here. So uh, who, who has their hand raised? I'm not sure if they're here to speak to this or not here. So I guess, I guess we can hear from Christian. Maybe Christian is wanting to talk about 803 Crescent Street. I don't know. 803 Crescent or... Well I'm, Christian, I'm not sure if Christian's wanting to talk about the previous yeah. agenda item or if they're here to speak to uh, the Zero Lawton Avenue. Um, hello, can you Hi, hear me? Christian. How you doing? Madam Chair, for the record, Christian Fallon, Principal Engineer and President of Fallon Corp. I had uh, unfortunately jumped on late. I was uh, stuck in a meeting, but um, I was just seeing where we are on the agenda because I'm number 13, I think, 900 West Chestnut Street. Yeah, we haven't made it there yet. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. All right, so um, yeah, I guess we're on uh, number eight, uh, Zero Lawton Avenue. I can give a quick uh, um, kind of rundown here. Um, so uh, Mr. Lopez uh, purchased this property. Um, I think it was on April 19th of 2023. Um, he reached out to me uh, over the phone and uh, asked if this property was uh, within the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, I did a quick desktop review uh, with the, the, the data layers on Mass Mapper and didn't see anything that was apparent there. Um, so I uh, emailed him back and said that, you know, as far as I was aware, not, not within jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, and then the day or so before I issued the enforcement order, which I, I have done, um, we, uh, the city started getting a whole bunch of complaints from residents in the area. Um, uh, unbeknownst to me, there was an intermittent stream that runs behind, you know, on part of this property through a bunch of different adjacent properties uh, in that area. Um, and so there was concern from the community that that was going to cause flooding. So I did issue an enforcement order um, and uh, Edson is uh, here to speak to this, I guess, as well. Um, do you want me to do any share screen? I mean, so basically the enforcement order was for, uh, I, I, you know, there was some clearing at the site and then also there was some fill being uh, dumped uh, on the site. So I'm not sure what uh, Mr. Lopez, uh, his plan is for the site, um, what, what he's trying to accomplish there. Uh, but, you know, I ordered, uh, you know, issued a cease and desist uh, with the enforcement order. Mr. Holden, do you have pictures present? Do you have pictures there that you could- Yeah, I can get those going in a moment um, and we can let Mr. Uh, Lopez uh, speak if you want. Okay, Mr. Lopez. Yes, here. Yes, I uh, bought the property back in April, uh, hoping uh, I could uh, basically buy it as an investment property. Uh, but it seems like uh, I re after receiving in this notice of uh, uh, of the violation, which I did not intend to uh, violate any current uh, uh, law, especially conservation. That's why I actually reached out uh, to Mr. Holden just to make sure I was on the right track there. But after receiving the notice, I did stop the work just to see how I could uh, move forward. Uh, I was looking to see if I could get maybe a pipe down where the stream is, if that's approved by the, the board. I'm sorry, if you could get what, please? Uh, like a pipe where the stream is and see uh, exactly where that uh, the wetland protected area is. 
if there is one close by? Uh, that would be the purview of a wetland scientist, wouldn't it? For identification of resource areas, yes. Um, I'm not sure if, if uh, as far as the pipe, are you referring to like a, a culvert or something of that sort, Mr. Lopez? Uh, yeah, corrugated uh, pipe. Okay, yeah, so that would be kind of, yep. One side to, uh, to to the next, just to see if it could kind of not have like a, a barrier if if I fill it up or anything like that. Because uh, I did all of that just uh, because uh, I did receive a notification that there was no protection for the land. So I went ahead and did the clearing and everything like that, uh, thinking that there's no conservation. And that's it for photos, Kyle? Go I've got some more photos. Um, so uh, you can't quite see it um, from the photo. I, I didn't I didn't get on the property. So all these are taken from the street. But um, over back in this corner, uh, there is standing water um, over here. And it kind of extends uh, back over this way behind the, the pile of fill here. So and that's kind of the, the area that um, that the intermittent stream is in it. And it, it goes kind of uh, along all the properties that are kind of uh, next to this down, like down the road, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. So um, mm -hmm. there's certainly concern here. Um, and uh, so and I guess there's another thing to add here. Um, once we got some, uh, you know, the complaints from neighbors and, and things, um, uh, Director May of the planning department uh, pulled up some old, uh, old development plans for some, uh, some properties on nearby streets uh, and, and on those plans, uh, there are some wetlands delineated. Uh, and that's another reason that we were able to kind of confirm that there was a resource area here. Um, but again, that didn't come up until after we got kind of complaints from around in the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Am I able to see the plants? I would uh, like to know where like the resource area is. Yeah, possibly. so the, the plans weren't specifically of this area. I think it's, is it Burrell, Burrell Street? That's like just down the way. I think that's, uh, that's where the you? development was. So it's, it's a, maybe, a, maybe a, a few houses down, but I can certainly forward that to you. That would be great. It was unfortunate that that you were given misinformation, but I understand how that could happen too. Um, yeah, you know, and and uh, uh, I think in the future, you know, uh, I'm just going to whenever you know whenever I do something like this again, uh, I'll just say, hey, this is not a you know this is this is not a binding uh, recommendation or whatever. Like to get the actual delineation, uh, you would need to file an RDA, and I, I that just I didn't include that language. Um, I will moving forward. Is it too late to ask for an RDA now with a um, potential? Uh, I, I think that the tough part here is that we need to determine where and what resource areas are there. Right. So, right. Um, and, and basically we're kind of dealing with two things. So we had an enforcement order that was issued. So the commission um, would, for that to kind of be in official fruition, the commission would have to ratify it. Um, mm -hmm. It could be something that uh, the commission requests an RDA to kind of determine where the boundaries are. Um, mm -hmm. that, that can definitely be done. Traditionally, that's done through an ANRAD, an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. Um, but you, know, you can do it through the filing of an RDA. And I, I think that's kind of step one to determine what, ha what was where, where was work done in relation to those resource areas um, before we can kind of determine what action um, is recommended or, or requested by the commission. Just so, for clarification purposes, yep. at least for, for the commissioners as well, as for Mr. Lopes, um, an ANRAD is a, a larger yep. process. You have to let a butters know and everything. So yes, there there's there's a couple you can you can get a resource area approved through a, a couple different forms like through a couple different permits so if you did an ANRAD 
um, that would be something that you can use that, that would be your line or your delineation for three years. And then you can say, use that if you were to do a notice of intent and you're kind of saying, hey, we already got this resource area confirmed. So now we're just focusing on the work. Um, it does require a butter notification and public notice. Um, an RDA does not require a butter notification. It does still require public notice. Um, so an there's RDA a couple options. An RDA doesn't necessarily guarantee that the delineation is. It, it, it can be. It depends yeah. on what's requested in the RDA. There's a couple different options. So it can be kind of confirming that the boundaries were delineated correctly. It can be confirming what resource areas are there. Um, so there, there's a couple different avenues. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, what the commission could request is we want some form of something saying, here's where the resource areas are. Right. And, you know, it would be up to um, Mr. Lopez or, or whatever representative you might employ to kind of choose what would be most appropriate. And they could certainly mm -hmm. kind of uh, move forward mm -hmm. in asking further questions with Kyle. Um, but I think at this point, it, it's prudent to just determine what resource areas we're working with and how they were impacted and or if if it was just the buffer zone if it was the resource areas um and then go from there so uh a couple different options but i think step one as far as the commission's concerned is going to be ratification of the enforcement mm -hmm. order you know mm -hmm. should you choose to do so um and then it would be further steps from there and i don't know if you have anything further to add uh kyle um, not really with that, but I just, just I wanted to make a correction. Uh, the uh, the plans that I was referring to was for a development on Belgravia Avenue, which is the next kind of road over. So um, that's the the development plan that I was referring to earlier. But beyond that, I don't have anything else to add. Thank you. Okay. So commissioners. We have to decide whether or not we want to ratify this enforcement order. If the ratification helps both Mr. Lopez and us figure out where the resource area is, then of course that's what we should proceed with because I think that's where the biggest question is for everybody. It's what mm -hmm. where exactly this is. So then he can figure out what to do with the property. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. Peggy or Sharifa, any comments or questions? No, I, I agree with Laura. Insane, I agree. Okay, so I entertain a motion then to ratify the enforcement order for, um, what is it, Zero Lawton Avenue? Yes. Make a motion to ratify the enforcement order for Zero Lawton Avenue. I second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to ratify the enforcement order for uh, zero Lawton Avenue. May I suggest that maybe we could add that a, an environmental delineation be done as part of the enforcement order? It can. So, or, ahead, go ahead. Well, Elise, I was going to ask you, since the enforcement order has already been issued, um, can we modify the, that now? As, yeah, as the yeah. So approves it. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like as a part condition. of this ratification, it, it can also be kind of a, an amendment dash ratification. So, you you know, um, motion to ratify the enforcement order um, with an amendment that uh, wetland scientists be employed to delineate the wetlands or, or you know, something along those lines. Uh, definitely, it can be amended. And Kyle would basically um, add that in and then kind of reissue it uh, for, you know, to, to Mr. Lopez. Mm-hmm. Commissioner, do you think that's okay? I'm good. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion then in front of the commission to modify the enforcement order for Zero Lawton Avenue with a stipulation that environmental scientists should, or someone should be hired to be able to delineate the wetlands properly and then move forward. Okay. Okay. Um, then a vote on the motion, please. Uh, be clear, I. Curtis, I. 
Map I. And Voris I. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. And then um, I just have one one final thing here. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, so I this is what I I pulled up. This is a uh, kind of the the mass GIS map. So I just want to kind of explain what we're looking at here. So over on the right side are all the different layers um, that I normally check to see if there's a resource area around. Um, and you can see how there, there are no layers that are like exhibiting on the map. So that was the first thing. Secondly, when I looked at this originally, um, I was looking at the assessors layer, which didn't have, the, it's not a satellite view, but on this view, you can see the intermittent stream kind of come, come up right through here where my mouse is, go underneath this drive, and it kind of continues on through the woods here. Uh, but I just didn't mm -hmm. look at the satellite imagery. I just looked at the assessors map layer. So, you know, it's, that's kind of what we're dealing with here. But anyway, there you mm -hmm. go. Okay, and and the red uh, trapezoid is that the actual I just drew that on there to to because this does this isn't like an addressed lot, so I just mm -hmm. drew that on there uh, so we could show okay, see the where general the, area. the infractions mm -hmm. happen. Okay, thank you, Madam okay. Chair. Did we get a second on that motion? I might have missed it, but I just wanted to make sure we did. I believe so. I think it was seconded awesome. by Peggy. Yep. Thank mm -hmm. you, Peggy. <laughs> thank you. Um, Mr. Ed, uh, Mr. Lopes, sorry. Um, any questions or anything? Um, yeah, so I don't know if I'd have to uh, just uh, continue checking with Kyle uh, once I have a plan or is everything on hold up until the next meeting with the scientists? Yeah, so I guess uh, we can be in communication going forward to the next meeting. I think that um, I will issue a, 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 a new enforcement order with the language that the board just approved, um, requiring that we basically uh, have you, you employ someone to go out there and, and delineate the resource areas. Um, and I can work with you on, on that. Uh, and then once we have a, that person does that work, uh, we can then present that, that plan to the commission for their review. And then, okay. and, then, and then we'll go forward from that point. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much for your cooperation, Mr. Lopes. Really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda will be 1507 Main Street. It's also a new enforcement order. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm gonna promote someone here, Jay Simo to speak to this, hopefully. Um, just a little background on this. Um, I was uh, alerted to this uh, by uh, the Quality of Life Task Force for Brockton. Um, and they informed me that that there had been some paving done uh, over uh, at the, to kind of extending this, this drive here. I've got, I can share a screen. I've got my uh, window up over here. So um, Thank you. This is uh, this bottom photo here is kind of uh, showing the resource areas that are mapped on Mass Mapper. Um, this parking lot here is the the one that was extended, and it was extended into this resource area here. And you can see that circled in in red on this top photo. Um, so that area that's in the in the top photo is the area that the, the pavement was kind of extended. Um, and I don't think it's actually pavement. I think it's like a like a hard packed fill or something. But in any case, the the the, the parking area has been extended here into the to the wetland resource area. So that's that's why the uh, enforcement order was issued. Thank you. Yeah. And have you promoted some oh Mr. Simo? Yep. Uh, Jay Simo is is uh, has been promoted and is able to speak. Oh and I guess we have another one uh, called George. <clears throat> I think George is the uh, this may be George Brewster. I think he owns the uh, the ambulance um, uh, service company, which is in this the 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 lot basically that that owns this. All, all right, right. Uh, gentlemen, you're both uh, here. And you're able to speak. Thank you. First of all, uh, this is George Brewster, and I own the property. I'm trustee of the property. I rent the property to Brewster Ambulance, which are my sons. Uh, our neighbor next door had asked if he could park a tow truck on our lawn or, or our lot, and my sons told him yes, you could. Well, that somehow evolved into multiple pay, um, tow trucks, multiple fenced in area, and it was all 
um, not with permission. Now, I'm willing to clean it up. Tell me what I need to do. Uh, and I will go after the person next door for damages. Thank you, Mr. Brewster. That's very succinct. <laughs> we try to be a good neighbor. We try to help out our neighbor. And this is where I am tonight. Mm -hmm. We also have the Brockton police buses on that lot. They need to be told to move. Um, so you tell me what I need to do to clean it up, and I will do that. Okay. And Mr. S Mr. Simo, or is it Mr. Simo? J. Simo? Simonelli. Excuse me? Simonelli. Simonelli? Yes. Simonelli? Yeah. Hi. Yes. Hi. I just was wondering if you'd like to have anything to say about the enforcement order? Um, I, I'm just looking to rectify whatever issues there are. I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to impede or, um, uh, bring any more negative. Uh, I, I, I really don't, I was not under the impression that that is the terms, but, um, I, I, I just want to rectify it and make sure that everybody is happy. I, naturally don't want anything as far as the uh, as far as our neighbors go I don't want them being upset with us we have a great relationship with all of the people that we encounter over there and Mr. Simonelli, I, may right. I just ask how you're related to the Brewster ambulance service are you no we you have related? we have a, a few of the friends over there including some of the Brewster family that are mm -hmm. friends excuse okay. me. excuse me George Brewster again he yes. is our neighbor next door that we allowed to park one, okay. one tow truck in our lot. Okay, I got you. Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess the first thing that we have to do really as a commission would have to be to um, ratify the enforcement order. Is Peggy still here? Did she? Um, George Brewster again, I know Peggy, maybe she had to excuse herself from this. Yeah, I, I, I see that she may have dropped, uh, Madam Chair. Oh, she raised her hand. She may be, uh, have, I have to promote her back in. She's, she's here. Okay. Here she is. Oh, okay. okay. Hi, I'm here. I'm up in the okay. White Mountains. I yeah. lost my connection, so I had to reestablish, so I'm sorry. Okay, I'm Peggy. Ready. Were you able to hear what was going on? Uh, yes, I was okay. able to get the audio. I heard about the Brewster um, issue and things, yes. Okay, okay. So I think the first thing that we have to do is ratify the enforcement order, correct? That is correct, and Madam Chair. Mm-hmm. So I entertain a motion to ratify the um, enforcement order for 1507 Main Street. I make a motion to ratify the uh, enforcement order for 1507 Main Street. Mm -hmm. I will second that motion. Okay, um, I'm sorry, Kyle, this is kind of a little out of order again. Did you have any stipulations that went along with that enforcement order as far as what you um, wanted to have attached to that? Sure, I, uh, I can read you those in a moment. In front of me. Thank you. Um, so uh, the, the stipulations that I put on the enforcement order were for, to have them remove all vehicles that, that were parked on that the newly paved area. Um, mm -hmm. to uh, to refrain uh, from further impacting the resource area. Um, I also uh, asked for a restoration plan to be submitted to the Conservation Commission, including the following, identification of resource areas and documentation of alterations to those resource areas uh, to be completed by a professional wetland scientist and or environment, environmental scientist. Um, and that's, that's, that's it. So just those two things. Okay. Oh, so and, and then I also uh, asked for a sequence of schedule uh, a sequence and schedule of restoration to return the area to uh, to its previously uh, 
previous state. Okay. So I'll just update the, the a motion. So I make a motion to ratify the enforcement order to 1507 Main Street, uh, including the stipulations outlined by Agent Holden. Okay. So that, uh, did anyone second that motion? I don't think so. I will second that motion again. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Declare aye. Curtis, aye. Map I and Voris I. Motion carries. It's been it's been ratified. Um, thank you, Mr. Brewster. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, just an FYI, I believe all the vehicles have been moved, so it's just a matter of uh, you know restoring it back to the original. Good. Thank you, and thank you uh, for attending, Mr. Simonelli. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Have a lovely night. You too. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, the next one was uh, another new enforcement order. I'm sorry, order for 270 Howard Street. Uh, yes, I believe we have um, uh, someone here to speak to this as well. Um, and I can just give a quick. Uh, uh, update to this as well. So uh, this is another one that I was informed with, uh, informed about by the Quality of Life Task Force. Um, they informed me that there was uh, some clear cutting that had occurred on this property. Um, so I went out and uh, I wasn't really quite able to see anything from the road. I, I could just confirm that there was some clear cutting that had been done. Um, I can share my screen here as well. Let's do Thank that. you. Um, so here are a couple of photos, uh, that kind of show the area that that's been disturbed. Um, you know, so this, this all used to be wooded here. Um, and then I'll show you another, I think I've got it. Yeah. So this is, this is, uh, another, you know, mass mapper, uh, uh, map here showing kind of the resource areas in question. So, uh, this dark solid green area is the flood zone, um, flood zone a, and then, uh, you can't, it's hard to see, but there's kind of like some blue texture underneath the green over here. Uh, this solid kind of line uh, going vertically through the, the picture is a, uh, a rail line. Um, so there are wetlands on the left side of our screen here. Uh, and the concern is that there's a, you know, the, any work that was done over here would be within buffer zone to the wetland. And then there's a little bit of flood zone that, that was also impacted. Um, so that's kind of a, a a brief overview visually of, of what's happened here. All right. Um, and I guess you want to hear from uh, Mr. B sorry. Burrell. Um, Burrell. Sorry. Thank you. So hi, do you Mr. Wanna... Burrell. Yes. Hi. Okay. So just, I met with Kyle last week just to discuss some of what has happened there. And again, you know, this is something that, um, you know, my sons were trying to solve a problem we had with our insurance company, with trees, with graffiti, and clearly they, you know, they overstepped. So I'm just looking to see what do I need to do to rectify what happened and we'll, we'll get on it. So once again, um, wetland delineation is necessary at that point as part of the enforcement order? Yeah, and that, and that language is, was included in this order as well. Um, basically, uh, the, the language that was in the enforcement order uh, includes the following, uh, cease and desist all earth moving activity uh, within uh, and construction within the flood zone and the 100 foot buffer zone from that wetland, um, establish erosion controls at the, limit, at the existing limit of work uh, to protect the you know the resources that weren't disturbed, and then uh, you know to to generate a, re a restoration plan uh, that will be submitted to the commission. That includes the following: identification of resource areas and documentation of alterations to those resource areas completed by a professional wetland scientist or environmental scientist. And then uh, as part of that plan, to have a sequence and schedule of restoration to return the the altered imp and impacted areas to conditions prior to the earth moving activities. 
Okay. We we did already hit a BLE area. Um, you know, that step we did. Um, and again, would you would you um you know I have I have what you send me. So I mean I'll just uh, go and find an environmental science. I have a relationship with Homegrown and I'm sure he could handle this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So will we expect to hear back from you, Mr. Burrell, maybe next month to see what you have? Sure. What you've taken? Would yeah, okay? what, I, what I'll do is, I mean, I'll reach out and find out. I know a lot of these, you know, professional people are very backed up. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, will, I will look and I will, I will give you the schedule that I am given and mm -hmm. we'll move from there. Okay. So the first step that we must make is to ratify the enforcement order. Mm -hmm. As as it was read by Kyle, does anyone commissioners do you have any questions at all? No, mm -hmm. no, no. I entertain a vote. I mean, a, a motion, please, to ratify. I make a motion to ratify the enforcement order to two seventy Howard Street, including the stipulations outlined by the agent um, today, as of today. Motion has been made. Second I'll that second motion. That motion. Oh, okay. Motion by two people. I mean, seconded by two people. We have a second and a third. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. Um, I, I guess, Sharifa, maybe we could say that Ms. Mapp has seconded. Um, and um, so we'll take a vote, please, on the Speaker. motion. Speaker, aye. Peggy, are you there? Uh, Peggy, you're muted. Yes, Curtis, I. Map, I. And Voris, I. The motion is carried to ratify that um, enforcement order. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burrell. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, another new enforcement order is at 57 River Street. <laughs> Mr. Holden, uh, if yeah, here. so Thanks. I can kind of give a little uh, little history to this as well. Um, first off, uh, the reason I was made aware of this is uh, a neighbor uh, that, that rides their bike, I guess, in this area, saw that there was some work that was being done here, uh, notified the planning department. So I went out and confirmed that there was some sort of earth moving activity at the site. Um, I wasn't able to make contact with anyone on location when I was there, uh, so I did not go on to the site itself, but from the road, I was able to uh, see that there were just mounds of, of dirt over there. Um, I did send out the enforcement order um, on the 7th of this month um, through certified mail. I never received anything back, so I'm not, I don't know if they, they received this. Um, that said, um, uh, Agent Shave uh, issued an enforcement order for the same property for the same type of work in uh, on June 22nd of 2020. Um, and as far as I can tell, uh, she had a follow-up email or a follow-up letter that was sent the month after the fact, because I don't think they showed up to that that first uh, enforcement order, like the meeting following that that order. Um, and then I, I didn't see anything else as far as the filing of a after the fact notice of intent or any other documentation pertaining to this property at all on my in my files. So um, that's kind of where we are with this one. Um, I can show you some of the photos that Megan took. They're much better. She was actually on the site. Um, mm -hmm. And then I can kind of show you what I was able to take there too. So um, let me share my screen here. So, so this is uh, basically what you can see from the road. Um, and obviously this is all, this. and I guess to, to, to talk about the resource areas impacted, all of this backyard is within floodplain of Trout Brook. And that's the concern here. Uh, any, any change in elevation in floodplain needs to be permitted because any change in elevation can have downstream effects, obviously with flooding. So um, so obviously there's, there's fill either being added here or they're doing digging or something back there. And this is, again, this is, these are photos from 2020. So this is old, old photos. I've got a few more here from Megan. Let's see, maybe. Oh, try this. Okay, so she's actually farther on the site now and you, the, the, you know, 
I think Trout Brook is kind of back in this area, but I, I'm not quite sure orientation wise, but there's obviously quite a bit of fill that's been dumped mm -hmm. back here. And again, these are all old photos, um, no. but it's, it's pretty significant, right? Um, I will sh show you, let's see, the photos that I took when I was there last week or the week before. All right, so again, I did not go on site. I was just all taking this from the, the road, but you can see that there is some, some piles of fill here between these two vehicles. I tried to zoom in with my phone camera. It's not the best, but you can see, again, you can see this is off, off the road here. Um, I did drive by again um, this week. Uh, I got a report from the same person that, that reported, the neighbor that reported on this initially to the planning department, that there was an excavator out here doing additional work after I had issued the enforcement order. And so I went by again uh, earlier this week, and this kind of mound of dirt is no longer there. So I don't know if they just spread it out, if they've removed it, unsure. Um, but that's kind of where we are now. Uh, and mm -hmm. again, I've not heard anything back um, from, from anyone here. And I guess I can check to see if anyone has their hand raised in the attendees um, that do. is here to speak to this. But I didn't see anyone that's, that's here to talk about this at all. And you're sure of the identity of the homeowner that you, um, or the property owner? Uh, I'm fairly certain. So it's registered to, uh, the individual that it's registered to, uh, has their name on the mailbox outside the house. So I think it's this, I think it's the right person. Um, but I have not, they may have just de declined, um, accepting the, the, the certified mail. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I rang the bell when I was there the first time to try to get access to the site and, you know, no one came down. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder what you do when that happens. So, you know, um, uh, Madam Chair, we have been in discussions about uh, enforcement problems generally with the commission. I mm -hmm. think this one might be a good case to refer to the law department. Um, we can, mm -hmm. I can try to reach out again and and basically Definitely. see that in 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 a follow up letter. And if we don't hear back Especially from them since, yeah. by next month, then maybe we refer this to law. I think that sounds like a great idea because that does. I mean, it does sound like if it happened two years ago, three years ago, and it's continuing to happen with no response. I mean, I've seen enforcement orders orders that um, nothing is done with, but at least they're accepted and someone has, you know, um, taken onus of the- Right. And I think that this was. in particular, like, especially those photos, I, again, I didn't have great site access, but like from the photos that Megan had, like that's some really egregious transgressions as far yeah. as, uh, it, you know, with all that yeah. fill that was added there, uh, That that's that's a major problem. So yeah. I, think it, it, I think it is- it is to that level um, that, that sure. I think action does need to be to take place here. Uh, Peggy mm -hmm. Curtis has her hand raised. Peggy. Um, hi. Um, I'm sure. wondering, um, I noticed the name is Cardoso. Um, have we issued that order or letter in another language, um, possibly Cape Verdean, um, so that it's clear? Um, maybe that is that may be an issue as to why it's been ignored. But if we don't get a response, obviously by the next meeting in August, and we've you know made every effort to issue the letter in uh, the language mm -hmm. um, of their um, native tongue, um, I think definitely refer that to the law department because I think um, we've done all that we can do uh, at this point to get them to, um, you know, comply. Yeah, that's a great point, Peggy. Um, I can look into like on the, on this follow-up letter that I, that I'm going to send, um, I can look to having that translated into, you know, the four kind of major languages in Brockton and, you know, I can send four, you know, certified males and, and see if they, you know, Mm -hmm. If any of them uh, are delivered, so I think it's a good. That's a great I got point. Four certified males. I would know they're important. <laughs> you know, I'd open well, up at least right, one you know, of them. <laughs> think, but so so just for the commission's uh, uh, information, when I send out enforcement orders like this, I send out a certified a copy in certified mail. Then I also send just a, a normal regular uh, mail uh, that's not certified. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, haven't still haven't heard back. But that's kind of the standard procedure when I send these out. Mm -hmm. 
when you do certified, is it with signature required or no? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I guess the obvious step that we must take is to, is to um, ratify the enforcement order for 57 River Street. So I entertain that motion. I make a motion to ratify the enforcement order for 57 River Street. And in, in, in that the letter and if the enforcement order oh, be sent out in the four languages? Yeah, okay? and that the enforce, yes. And then since we've identified through the agent that we are able to send it out in um, four major languages. So we'll do that next. Mm -hmm. I'll second that motion. Motion has been made and seconded. Um, roll call vote. Speaker I. Curtis I. Map I. And Voris I. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Now let's see. The next one, I believe, is uh, amended order of conditions for 900 West Chestnut. It was an, um, an amended OOC. Is that correct? Is that the next one? Yeah, that is correct. And I think Mr. Farland was here before. Is Mr. Farland still here? Hello, Madam Chair. For the record, Christian Fallon, Principal Engineer and President of Fallon Corp. Here tonight representing Parallel Products. Um, we are looking to amend the order of conditions for uh, 900 West Chestnut Street, which was the Lynch Towing Project. I'm not sure how many commission members were on the board for that project. But basically, um, we're looking to amend the, the the order in order to put up the uh, solar array rays that we have here, that which are canopies. Um, we feel these canopies are negligible into any impacts to the abundant resource areas um, as they're all over the existing limit of work area and the stormwater flows through the canopies. Um, so there's no additional impervious areas or impacts to the stormwater. Um, it's all within the limit of work. So we're hoping we can just add on to amend the existing order as the work's gonna be happening the same time this project's currently under construction. And you, you are, Representing Parallel Products, who are the company that is that um, installed the solar arrays? Is that correct? Yes, they're going to be the solar owners. Canopies. Yeah, they're going to be the owners of the the solar arrays. They basically lease the space from Lynch's Towing. Hmm. I, I just didn't know. And so, if this is an amended order of conditions, does the original applicant have to submit the request because of the no? Because... We had the, own, the owner signed off. Okay. On Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kyle, do you have a report or a lease a report from an agent's report? Um, well, first, uh, you know, Peggy's got her hand raised, so I don't know if she has anything to say here. Peggy? Thank you. Um, I was just curious as to uh, will that be constructed first before the regular building? And then what kind of impact will that have uh, on the um, uh, the um, the jurisdictional areas um, when the, it's being constructed? So the okay. all the canopies are going to be in the parking area. So they'll get done before the parking lot's paved. Oh, um, really? Before, oh yeah, I guess they would have to. Yeah, they're all done. It's done with a um, by a drill rig. So the drill mm -hmm. rig drills down, removes the soil. The soil get re gets removed off site, and it gets filled with concrete as the concrete are all concrete piles. Um, and then the solar array will get built on top of that. Hmm. So, would you submit plans, specific plans, um, that demonstrate where those those pilings will be and all of that kind of stuff and then plans for um 
using the equipment, the heavier equipment that you'd be using, you know, that you'd be using? Yeah, we submitted the plans. Kyle, I don't know, if, can you pull them up? That would yeah, be great. Uh, I can do that uh, in, in a moment. I, I will pull those plans up, certainly. Um, just to give a little bit more context uh, to this whole project, you mind if I kind of give a little bit more history? No, not at all. Please do. Okay, so um, so this this site um, was uh, the the you know there there was basically a landfill that was that was put here by the city, I think, and it was used as a landfill from approximately 1920 uh, to around 1970. Um, so uh, they've already been issued in order of conditions to kind of uh, to to develop the site in uh, for let's see. Um, Lynch's towing, uh, I believe. Lynch's towing, yeah, basically to have it serve as a, as a towing yard, right? I think. And um, anyway, so that that's all that's all kind of gone through the process with the commission in the past. Now, um, the current work that's being done is they're basically uh, uh, doing reclamation activities with the soil because there's all this uh, debris and trash that that's been buried on site. So they have to go through and kind of clean out all this debris and, and trash. And then like make sure there's a solid foundation that, that you're able to actually build upon. So that's the work that's actively being done currently on the site is they're doing the soil reclamation. Um, so that's kind of where we are now. After, after that whole process is finished, uh, I think they're constructing a new like a building there. And then also they're going to be putting a, a like a parking lot down. So the amended order of conditions is saying, hey, we've already been uh, approved for this parking lot. Can we add solar panels above the parking lot? And these solar panels are going to be raised so you can have parking underneath them. So it's still going to function as a parking lot. But in addition to that, they're asking, they're they're proposing that we uh, add solar panels that that will kind of take over uh, and kind of act as like almost like an awning above above where these cars can be parked. So that's kind of uh, kind of a, a background there too. So I will pull up the plans here in a moment. Um, so yeah, just give me a minute. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Farland. Um... I've seen very large trucks, the very large tow trucks for lynches with lots of trucks and things on them. How high are these arrays? The arrays, um, just so you know, we, we're doing this throughout the Commonwealth, um, um, specifically with parallel products. We have about 30 sites or so, and we're actually focusing on a lot of uh, junkyards uh, most of the time we're, we're cleaning them up. This happens to be one that's going to be a new junkyard. Um, so they, with their, they're designed for trucks to be able to access drive underneath them. In, in some instances, we, we have them where, you know, fire apparatus can get underneath them as well. So the heights you'll see, um, there's a detail of them as well. Um, if you keep scrolling down, but they range anywhere from 16 feet, probably at the at the minimum um, to around, you know, 25. But the yeah, so, so for example, the, this one that we're looking at now uh, has a minimum clearance on this left side of 12 feet, and then a maximum over on this right side looks like 14 foot and four inches, four and a half inches, maybe here. Uh, and but this is just one uh, one panel. So like as you look up at this plan here. Uh, you can see there are, are, are multiple different solar arrays. Each one of these arrays have different kind of uh, uh, specs, right? So some of them are are raised higher than others, and, and that's all mm -hmm. here within the plan. Okay. Yep. Yeah, they're all pretty similar. Um, the larger ones, they, they tend to get a little bit higher as they're all pitched at five degrees. So the longer you go, the higher they'll, they'll, have, higher they'll get. And what is that material that you said will be in? that will the water will be able to flow through yeah so in in regard it's a steel structure and then the uh, solar arrays um align along it but there's a gap there's a like a two inch gap in between all the solar arrays so the water um it's not like a roof where it would all sheet flow to one end it it kind of flows through each individual panel um and acts as you know it typically would during any other rainstorm, hmm. if the panels weren't there. Thank you. Are they all designed to flow towards the um, storm drain? Yeah, so it's basically the grades on the site aren't changing. So the, the proposed grades that they 
um, I think it was Home Holmgren that designed this. The, the the proposed grades aren't changing at all. So in regards to the stormwater, it's the it's the exact same stormwater caps. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Elise, do you have any um, familiar familiarity with this kind of a project? I've certainly seen it done um, in the past. Um, I am curious uh, as far as um, the installation of the piles. Do you know how deep you have to go or, or how deep you're planning on drilling to install the um, piles or, you know, the, the columns? Um, yeah, typically, so these plans are at 50% um, uh, construction drawings right now. The geotech report and the structural will be finalized. But from previous past projects, and we've done a lot of similar projects with sites like this, um, where the soils are all disturbed, urban fill, mm -hmm. but we end up going typically down further than we, we would normally if it was, you know, a clean site. Mm -hmm. But I would say on the average, we can go anywhere from 10 to 15 feet, or if we have bedrock. Do you anticipate any um, dewatering to be necessary? I'm not as, as familiar with, with this site in particular, so I'm not sure. Where are you anticipating um, intercepting water table, if, if at all, on this? Yeah, if we do, we will be you know dewatering de in accordance with, I believe, the order of conditions already. Okay. Um, um uh, and then uh, the second thing that the commission might want to consider just as far as um res restoration um or seeding of the buffer zone it looks like i know some of the 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 canopy overhang is kind of over the existing stormwater um basin uh, and part of it's kind of over it looks like just just somewhere some area that might be um restored i don't know with with uh, some sort of seed mix or something is just um, as far as it would be a shaded area. Not sure if there's any certain plants or plantings proposed. Um, again, I, I'm not as familiar with this one. Um, and if that would just impact any of that kind of proposed restoration. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we're talking probably about the, I think, um, see the North Arrow on here. It's, it's uh, it'd be the northernmost. There's kind of a, there's a think, really long one, and then there's a little bit of a shorter one. Yeah, I think that's the south side, right? The bottom of the plan? Uh, oh, I guess it depends on which sheet we're looking at. I'm looking at which plan am I looking at? I'm looking at a different one. I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at this project. So it's going to be the bottom of the plan, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it, it's, yes, it's this area ones. down here yes, is the, the yeah. resource area. That, that's that is the resource area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's how close how close will they come to that resource area? It's, it's just hard for me to see on the... Um, yeah, it looks like you know in this corner of this one that I think this line here is the 50 foot uh, buffer zone. So oh, it will cross it over the 50 foot, like you know, ne nearer than 50 feet to the wetland. Um, and then I think that I think this line is the is the 25 foot, and so this one's going to be kind of within you know it, it, the 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 overhang is going to be over part of the 25 foot. So where would the zone. actual pilots? Be. Would the, the pilings be within that within that 25 and 50 feet? No, we're all in the existing the proposed pavement area. So we're not going any closer than what the previous plans were. They're just basically on top. I know. I guess I guess my big concern, I I think I remember, Peggy, I don't know if you remember going out to this site and it was a big meadow. <laughs> It was really yes, kind of a cool meadow, and then to that yeah, site. Yes. yeah, and, and um, yeah. yeah. So it was it's one thing if it's if it's you're going to take fill down and then pave. Another thing if you're going to drill down, you know, um, sixteen feet into that if it's a, you know if it's close to that resource area. I just don't know. And seriously, I'm only asking the questions of you know the um, specialists that we have here. Yeah. I don't know if yeah, that so should be looked at by someone or not, or it, I just it, feel like it, this is such a, I feel like it's it's quite a change that I, I, I don't feel comfortable making that decision now. I don't, but I don't know how the rest of the commission feels. It's, it's just basically like doing borings where it's not an open excavation area. So the boring goes straight down, the soil gets removed. So it's not like 
you have an open test pit 16 feet deep because yeah. obviously that would be a lot of disturbance mm -hmm. so yeah. this is more of like a boring going to you know vertically down um so the soil there's not much soil spill it comes right out of the hole and it gets removed immediately yeah. um joyce so i don't know if yes this would be helpful um but generally like uh mr farland said generally it does go you know it's straight down comes straight up um the only times i've ever seen um basically interaction with with any kind of material is um certain with certain kind of rigs and and depending on how deep you have to go when it's taken out i've seen um almost like a splatter in that area so it might be something that you know it would be prudent to make sure that um we have the appropriate erosion controls we'd want to make sure that there's a dewatering plan um if if they if that ends up coming up or maybe even having them develop something um, if that wasn't included in the prior filing to be approved by the commission. Um, it, it would be things to considering to be mm -hmm. considered, um, but overall it's not uh, like an in-depth excavation. It is pretty much a, an in and out thing, kind of like coring mm -hmm. it out more or less. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I just remember this case being a little uncomfortable with how close the everything was coming to the, you know, to the resource area. So yeah, and, and the, the the columns are proposed kind of at the furthest edge of the lot. So I think it would be um, something worth making sure that as that operation is occurring, it's occurring, I guess, as clean as possible. Um, right. I, they, I, I would like to have areas that where it's where it's it's tough because you're working so close. Right. So I would like to see that within. Uh, within the amendments or within the what is it addition okay, thing, if, that, if that could be done um peggy your hand is up yes i had a, a couple of questions so the solar panels will be installed first and then the driveway will be poured afterwards in the parking lot area so that long rectangle is actually the driveway where the trucks come through into the parking lot. Is that correct? Yeah, I think you're talking about the um, the loop. Yes, correct. Okay. Now, um, uh, you will be putting up silt socks anyway um, for both. Um, do those uh, pilings interfere with the pouring of the driveway and the um parking lot area nope so everything was designed around the parking spaces if you take a look at the plans you'll see there's little um columns that are all centered on the on the parking spaces mm -hmm. okay and then one more question sure. if there is a repair needed on the solar panel how does that work um, I mean, typically we go out, you know, once a year to, to inspect, and that's only if something's triggered. It's all monitored 24-7. Um, um, so if any, you know, repairs need to be replaced, they'll they'll go out there and replace panels as needed. Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with solar panels. So, you know, is it possible that it would break, that glass would shatter and... Um, yes you know, go into the wetland resource area? Um, how do panels get removed or replaced? Uh, things like that. Um, it's it's pretty standard. I don't, you know, you see them breaking, breaking often, but um, typically, you know, one of them may be offline and it's more electrical um, issues than anything, any uh, glass being broken or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to the dewatering, we can certainly, um, submit an additional um, dewatering plan. Mm -hmm. Where it's geared more towards the the drilling. Um, if the, if if Madam Chair, if you would want us to do that, I would appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Um, so would it be fair to say that we might um, get to see what all of the different amendments might be that would fulfill you know, our needs to make sure that that resource here is safe and that you might present that to us next at the next meeting. Sounds good. Um, uh, commission, 
How do you feel about that? I think that's, that's good. fine. Yeah. Elise Madam, or Kyle? I would say, Madam Chair, I, I'm not sure if, if um, Mr. or Mrs. Uh, S. Daggett had anything to add. They just had their hand raised for a bit. Okay, I will. Yep, I'll acknowledge that in a minute. Wait, what do you feel about um, just waiting until, uh, you know, getting more information from uh, Mr. Farland to kind of dot, you know, what, whatever, you know, where I would say, you know, if the commission would feel more comfortable having the additional information, then I think that's what the commission needs to do um, to to feel comfortable with the project. I'm not sure if, if Kyle has anything else to add, um, but, you know, it's, okay. it's your choice. Yep. I Kyle. don't have anything to add. Thank you. Okay. And Kyle, if you could, okay, I guess the Daggett, S. Daggett. Yeah, no, I have uh, nothing to add. Uh, I had raised my hand because I wasn't sure if Christian uh, oh. was online. Uh, oh. I am a project manager with the uh, Farland Corp. And when you were asking if Christian was here and you didn't answer, I, I raised my hand. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, it might be worth um, as far as but the whatever the whatever additional information um, is is being asked for that it be clarified, I guess, for the applicants to know exactly um, what they should be coming with for the next meeting. OK, just as a thought. OK. So it would be the watering information, correct? Uh, information about the drill, the setting of the. Um, yeah, so, uh, Madam Chair, I kind of have a list here that I might be able Good. to help you out with. So um, if, if you could think. come back uh, with a, a dewatering plan, if that were to be necessary for the project, um, also potentially uh, uh, getting uh, additional information on the impact of the overhang over the wetland resource area, um, that may or may not be something the commission is interested in, but that's something that came up today. Uh, and then finally, um, maybe just the inclusion of erosion controls around uh, uh, the pilings, at least on some of the the, the arrays that are nearby uh, the wetland resource area on the south part of the site. Mm -hmm. That's reasonable. Thank you. So, okay, to continue to the next meeting. It's fine with me. Okay, I entertain a motion then that we continue the amended order of conditions for um, 900 West Chestnut Street till the next meeting. I make a motion to uh, move forward 900 West Chestnut Street to the next uh, meeting, which is August 16th. Mm -hmm. I'll second that motion. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to continue 900 West Chestnut Street till the next meeting. Um, roll call vote, please. Speak aye. Curtis, aye. Map, aye. Boris, aye. Okay. Motion Thank passes. You. Thank you. Good evening. We'll see you next month. Okay. Um, and then we have a, another amended order of conditions. Um, for zero Hammond Street. Uh, do you know if a butters were notified or, or a butters? Is it necessary to notify a butters for amended orders of condition? I didn't even ask for the last one. Uh, yes, it is. And uh, Isaiah confirmed that all the butters uh, were notified. Um, he's not here this evening, but yes. Okay. Okay. Um, um, I've uh, uh, promoted attorney uh, Burke. Um, he uh, spoke to me about this project uh, last week. I'm not sure if there's oh, anyone else here to talk about this. I see Josh White. I'm going to promote Josh as well. Mm -hmm. And there's also Doug King. He's a with Josh. Oh, okay. Hey, guys. Can you hear us? Hi. Hi, Josh. Yeah. Hi, Ms. Burke. Oh, Mr. Wade. Good evening. Hi, welcome. Thank We'd love you. to hear from you. Thank you. Um, am I able to share my screen to pull up the plans? You Kyle. should be able to. If, if if you are unable to, let me know. I don't see an option at the bottom. 
Is he a participant? Should be, right? You might have to. One second, Josh. Let's him to panelists. Let some more. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Panelists to share. All right, Josh, I promoted you to a panelist. See if, see if you're able to share now. All right, gotcha now. Let me pull up the plans real quick. So just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Josh White. I'm from JDE Civil, uh, the civil engineer for this project. And I'm here with uh, Doug King behind me, the applicant and owner of the property. Um, so basically this, this project was approved back in 2015 and it's gone through a number of changes since um, we were last here in 2020 for an amended order and an extension permit. Um, which is the same reason we're here um, again tonight. Um, we uh, work has started on the site. The erosion trolls are on the perimeter have been installed and been inspected in the past. Um, and the applicant is looking to modify the site plan for some uh, specific features. Um, for this um, proposed cemetery. Um, I'll show one, uh, you guys see that. This is a, an example of the intent for this project. Um, this is the Sharon Memorial Park. Um, you can see the retaining wall on the side um, and a large grass area up above it. Um, and that's what the applicant is looking to kind of build here on the cemetery as just like a a nice feature when you drive in it's it's something everybody's going to want to see um so that's the intent behind um the proposed changes for this so soil. The rocks yeah in addition to uh so basically the change for this um project involves is all involved in uh, phase 1a part of this project which is basically the entire north side um, of the proposed cemetery um, and you can see the the wetland areas up here is the only one to the north so basically I'll go to another sheet but so this is the entrance off of Thatcher Street and we're proposing adding a, uh, a concrete retaining wall on this side um, to, like I mentioned in, in that picture, just to raise the grade, um, uh, both to provide that that feature, uh, that feature wall that uh, the applicant's looking for, and to raise the grade for adequate burial depths Generally throughout the, the site, we're proposing to raise the grade about four to six feet. Um, all of the walls around the perimeter are four feet, so they don't um, four and a half feet. require um, a structural engineers. Basically, they don't have to be structurally designed. Um, and they're gonna utilize both um, concrete walls and the stone the, the stone and boulders that are found uh, throughout the site um, because all of those have to be removed for um, the space for the burials to, um, to occur. So basically there's a this is a path that goes to the neighbor to the north um, the nuns there in a, and they want to they wanted to keep this path um that's how they go to their cemetery over here okay. now so we, we're proposing the wall there so they can keep this path open 
then down the road. And then they're going to go, they'll continue down the road of the proposed gravel uh, driveways, uh, like we're showing. Um, one change that did kind of happen um, after we submitted these, these plans, basically, like I mentioned, this path, they initially, the, the nuns, they wanted to keep this path, this section, but um, we met with them after we filed and they are okay with continuing on the, the gravel, either way. the gravel, gravel drive either way. Um, so this section of the wall, I believe it's like 50, uh, maybe like 75 feet of wall on either side. Um, so that's not going to be necessary. Um, it's just going to be continuous along the front. And so, like I mentioned, that'll raise the grade. Um, on this portion of the site, and then I'll just move to the the western side of the property. Uh, this the wall is mim mimic the wall that's on uh, Thatcher Street, and uh, yes, that's right. So, on the the western side of Street. of Hammond Street, the formerly fam formerly Han uh, Hamlin Street, which has been discontinued. There's an existing stone masonry wall. It's about four to four and a half feet tall. And I just got a picture of that. So it's it's a substantial wall. Um, and that's the existing drive. Um, that's Hammond Street. On Hammond Street. So that that's the, the look we're looking to continue. Um, so uh, this is the end of the existing pavement in Hammond Street, and then the existing wall goes here, then it stops right here. So from here, we're, we've got a proposed wall, and then the entrance to, ra post. to raise up, and then this continues to the other side, which I just showed you before. Um, so like I mentioned before, basically the, the purpose of this is to create that, that eye-popping feature that you see all around in various cemeteries and uh, raise the grade to provide the adequate burial depths um, throughout the property. Um, and that's, that's basically the intent for this. Um, like I mentioned at the start, all of the perimeter erosion controls are in place and have been inspected in the past and the limit of work that was previously approved is not gonna change. Um, all this is within the same limit of work. Um, so that's that's basically that's basically it. Um, so I'll Madam Chairman, uh, Jim Jim Burke, just to uh, just to add great job, but thank you very much, Josh. but uh, it isn't just the aesthetic. Uh, that we're dealing with, Madam Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr. King has uh, run into refusals uh, because of the uh, uh, the ground condition, soil condition, rock ledge. So uh, the, uh, the 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 increased level is is for purposes of functional uh, operation of the cemetery uh, uh, to uh, uh, allow him to use and utilize uh, the facility without dealing with the the, the uh, the impactful uh, rock and ledge that uh, exists at the base level. So that's another consideration. As, mm -hmm. as to the sisters, I will tell you that Doug and I both met with them and I, I've had the pleasure of representing the sisters uh, uh, over the years. Uh, the poor sisters of Jesus crucified and the sorrowful mother. And they're, they're excited about the plans. Uh, th this was their uh, cemetery for the convent uh, and they are, uh, uh, pleased and supportive in, in terms of it going forward. Um, I just had a quick question. So there are sisters that are buried there now? Uh, yes, there are. Okay, and, and uh, can you show me on the map where that is? And because this is really an expansion into phase one of a much larger, a lot, much larger um, facility, correct? You're, you're actually correct. Yeah, it is. And, and uh, uh, part of the arrangement uh, when Mr. King uh, took over the project is that uh, he will be responsible in per perpetuity for the uh, care of the sisters uh, cemetery. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then how much fill exactly you're bringing in? That's probably a question for Doug. 
it's like I mentioned before, it's roughly four to six feet. Well, it's four feet on the, the walls because all the walls are four feet tall. And then towards the center of the site, it's it's about six feet of fill throughout this um, upper portion of the property. It's about what, 20 acres, 10, 10 to 15 acres? Yeah, it's about 15 acres. 15 acres of fill? Ooh. Wow. What do you like use for the hills, fill? Like where do you get picture. the fill and what do you use for it? I'm sorry, can you repeat your, your question? I missed it. Yes. Um, what do you, what do you use for fill? Where do you get it? You wanna do you wanna like a, like a uh, chill glacial till clay material? Yeah, so Doug said it's a glacial till material. Um it's being um trucked in. And I misspoke about the the acreage uh the total acres about the of this upper portion it's about 6.8 um, acres then the entire properties um the greater number we gave before so it's about 6.8 acres just for the phase one section yeah just to clarify that yep i was just curious as to it seems like it's been hanging around for a while why? Well, you had the Why? COVID it, that really delayed it. Uh -huh. No, it just seems like you get up, you get up to a few months year. before it's going to expire, and then, and then just ask for a, an addition. And then this does look like quite a. Is this a substantial change to the original plans? This terracing. I mean, it's a, it's a, it is a, a good amount of change, but. Um, we're all we're we're dealing with the same the same areas. Uh, we're mm -hmm. not. Uh, so uh, as everything was designed before, it's we're dealing with the same amount of area. So it's it's not like we added a tremendous amount, and there's no additional impervious area being added or anything like that. So it's all grass going to be grass lawn area minus the the gravel roads, which have not changed. Uh, since before, so. Madam Chairwoman, to uh, try to address, I think the question you asked, Doug is ready to go on the project. If uh, he in fact gets the approval and uh, gets the amendment to the order, uh, it's not a question of kicking it down the road. He's uh, ready to begin and commence construction and has made arrangements for uh, uh, the proper securing the materials necessary. Kyle? I have a one okay. more question. What kind of equipment will be used and how close will they be to um, the regulated um, land? So from the from the previous um, submittal and order of conditions, uh, like I mentioned before, the erosion controls are there's all still in place. Um, so the limit of work is not changing. Um, and as you can see, the, the only wetland on the upper side of the, the site is this A series wetland here. And we're, we're holding at least 25 feet. Um, I think the erosion trolls are, I believe they're 30 28 feet, feet yeah. 28 to 30 feet off, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't show on this plan, but there's a, a 10 foot wide natural buffer that was required from, I believe the original um, submittal. So that's, so that's 10 feet right there. That's gonna remain vegetated. Um, and that wall will be built first. Yeah, the perimeter walls will be built first and then the grade will be raised up in between. So it'd be better control to make sure nothing does go into the wetlands. Yep. Because you'll have the wall. Yep. So so what yeah. what are the erosion controls that you have there? So at, I'll go to the, at that site right now. So 
So we have uh, silt fence and filter mint on the perimeters. The sock stuff. Yep. And is that from 2015 or 2020? Um, no, it was installed more recently than that. I want to say I don't have the year to two years. I want to say it was probably a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago that we that they installed it and we inspected it. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle, but, have you been out to the site? Uh, I have not been to the site, no. I would feel a little bit better if you had for approving anything. Um, I and and I I I don't think any of the any of the commissioners were on the commission at the time that this was originally permitted because it was a long time ago and it yeah. does seem like it's a pretty substantial change. So if uh, if we might be able to have the agent go out and take a look and bring back some just a little more information for the next meeting, I think I would feel much more comfortable. Madam Chair, might I um, ask a, a question? Or of course. Please question? Do. Yeah. Please do. Um, so um, it looks like basically around where the bordering vegetative wetlands are or the wetlands are delineated. So um, there's a retaining wall proposed and that is part of the newer work or was that a retaining wall proposed that's a kind of around there was that always proposed so the in short the retaining wall is new okay oh, oh i thought um, that was original so um i i think one thing to consider um is is with the fill uh and, and kind of with the raising of the grade uh yeah. especially kind of where we go down from 143 elevation down to 136 and in um, a short span it is just to see if if the applicants have kind of just looked how looked at how the storm water is going to flow towards that area as well as um, for the installation of the retaining wall what kind of access is going to be needed um, just mm -hmm. to make sure that um, as the work is done that it's it's you know done as obviously as carefully as possible. Um, so it might mm -hmm. be helpful for the commission to have just additional information relating to how the retaining wall will be installed as it pertains to the area um, kind of around the wetlands within that 25 foot um, and, and how that might alter or change any stormwater concerns. Just as something to, I think, additional information might be helpful for the commission to decide on, on if this amendment um, is is appropriate for the it, per the interests of the wetlands protection act as well as um you know how, how the the commission feels about this alteration to the project that's a very good point thank you Elise. i would agree um this is all new to me um and the fact that Kyle hasn't been out, I feel uncomfortable with making any decisions this evening. Um, as Elise said, you know, when you uh, raise the grade um, and add the wall and how the wall is going to be made, um, that all Im impacts the wetlands. And I was also concerned as how long do those erosion controls last? Um, are all of them new? Some of them new? Um, what's the life of an erosion control um, measure? Um, and do they need to be changed uh, periodically? And over the life of the project itself, you know, will that more need to be added? So I would feel more comfortable if Kyle had has, has had a chance. So my recommendation would be to um, continue to uh, next month after Kyle has had a chance to take a look at it. With this camera, please. I'm sorry, Joyce, what was that? I said with the camera, please. Oh, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got a couple of comments as well. Um, so I, I'm not like, I'm not an expert on, you know, uh, stormwater issues. Um, so I think yeah, I maybe uh, uh, prudent to have beta look at, at this because that was one of my concerns as well. Um, 
And then I can certainly uh, visit the site uh, in the meantime as well and kind of get a better feel for uh, the shape mm -hmm. of the erosion controls and everything else as well. Um, but yeah, I think I would be more comfortable if, if Beta was able to kind of do a, a review for the stormwater with, with the, again, with the addition of all this new fill and the grading of the site, I'm just not confident in, in being able to give a recommendation to the, to the commission about how that's going to impact potentially uh, the wetland resource areas. So that um, makes me feel much more comfortable. Good. Yeah. Um, and then I, a couple of other things. So, um, so this is a, uh, a request for an amended uh, order of conditions, but also there are um, you know, the uh, the existing order of conditions is is set to expire, I think, in uh, January of 2024. So they are also uh, apply, you know, asking for an extension. So um, those don't necessarily have to be handled tonight um, because we have we have time to 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 grant that extension, obviously. Um, but I just want to kind of throw that out there as well. Like, obviously we want to do these together, uh, depending on what we decide with the amended order of conditions, we can then also do the extension at the same time. Um, another option, uh, that, that, that the commission could, uh, decide on is that this is, uh, such a large change uh, from the original order of conditions that maybe this warrants, uh, filing of a new notice of intent. So again, that's something, uh, for the commission to decide on, but in the meantime, we can certainly, um, you know, look into this a little bit more, have beta look at the mm -hmm. uh, uh, stormwater um, and how that's going to impact the, the resource areas. Okay. I think that would give us a lot more information as far as um, how to move forward. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we will continue then. Oh, oh, are there any abutters? Any abutters at all present that might want to be heard? Do you see anyone? Uh, I do not see anyone uh, with their hand raised. Mr. White, no. would you just stop sharing your screen? Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much, by the way. Yeah, no problem. And if there are no um, abutters, I just have one more comment to make. But I'll take the abutters first, if there are any. I, I don't see anyone, anyone with their hand raised. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So just, just in general, when we um, compared the the new design from the previous design as far as stormwater we we kept the the overall watershed the flow of the water generally the same um so we didn't change the flow patterns too much it's the same um, area. so it's we're, like i said before we're dealing with the same areas um so they're they're all going to the same design points that they were before um it's it's just the the change in elevation would be the only, uh, mm -hmm. the only change. Mm -hmm. But we did we did take that into consideration when we mm -hmm. re basically regraded the entire site. So we did think about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I think it does take a review. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I entertain a motion then to um, continue. Um, what is this? Zero Hammond Street to the next meeting. I can make a motion to continue uh, zero Hammond Street to the next um, meeting on August 16th. I'll second that motion. Motion has been made and seconded. Um, roll call vote, please. Before I. Curtis, I. Yeah, I. And Boris, I. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you. And yep. Kyle, if you if you would like us present when you're when you're out there, or feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to walk the site sure. with you. Yeah, great. That sounds good. Thank you, Josh. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good thank night. You. Okay. Bye bye. Good night. Uh, and then before we move on to the next uh, agenda item, um, is the commission? Uh, uh, do they support uh, me reaching out to Beta to have them kind of review oh, the stormwater at the absolutely. site? Absolutely, okay, absolutely. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now where are we? An RDA. Yeah. Yes. That's where we are, right? On number fifteen. Uh, RDA. Yeah, fifteen. Yep. Yep. At forty-five Chestnut Drive. Yeah, uh, so this is, um, I guess I can start here. I, I've already, I've promoted uh, Lisa. Um, she is the, the property owner here. Um, just to give a little background here, um, uh, I get uh, building permits come before me. Um, and so this one was flagged, uh, basically the, the request for the building permit was to replace 
uh, a damaged uh, above ground pool. Um, there are some uh, things that are uh, uh, exempt from uh, the Wetlands Protection Act, it, like within someone's backyard, you know, if it's a, if it's a homeowner. Um, and pools generally are exempt, but because of the location of this pool and the proximity to the wetland resource area, um, it's specifically called out in the act that this, this is not exempt. Any pool that's within uh, 50 feet of the wetland resource area is, is not exempt. So that's why we have to go through this, this process. So uh, Lisa has submitted uh, an RDA, um, you know, just to kind of have me come out and look at the, the property and kind of give mm -hmm. my input about um, if I think there's going to be any negative impacts on the resource area. So I've uh, I've submitted uh, my agent report and I, I can give you kind of a, a more of a, a rundown of that uh, in a moment. I guess uh, Lisa is able to speak. Lisa, thank you for joining us tonight. Sorry about the wait. Um, okay, do you have I'm anything ready. else to add? Uh, nope, just that we're replacing it with the same exact size that has been there in existence for 13 years. Um, yep. Nothing is going to change. What happened yes, to the old pool, Lisa? Uh, yeah, the, after 13 years, the wall rusted and gave way. Yeah. yeah, and I've got some photos. If you guys are interested, you can see them on the drive. But, but as Lisa said, um, it, they're basically replacing the pool with the exact same model. Um, it's going to go in the exact same footprints. Uh, there is some kind of landscaping that's already done around the perimeter of the pool. Um, and so that's all like staying as is. Um, so uh, that's kind of the extent of, of the work here. So uh, my recommendation, uh, as is uh, shown in the agent report, is to issue a, a negative three determination, basically saying that this, uh, this activity is not going to negatively impact the wetland resource area. And the negative three determination also allows us to add some stipulations uh, to uh, when they proceed with the construction. So the stipulations that I've suggested are uh, construction materials and stockpiling uh, shall be placed outside of the 50 foot buffer zone. Um, and just, uh, we don't have it, the, the map in front of us here, but basically uh, they've got a fence line on the Eastern side of the property. And that fence line itself is about 10 feet from the wetland resource area. So I said, uh, no staging within about 40 feet of that, uh, of that fence line. Um, and then any disturbed ground shall be seeded immediately following construction. And then finally, pool water shall never be uh, or shall not be discharged into the yard or adjacent bordering vegetated wetland. Commissioners, any questions? No. Nope. Then I entertain a motion then for um, that a, a negative three determination be issued and a Positive two B. No, no, just the negative three on this one. Oh, just the negative three. Just yep. the negative three. Okay. Um, for 40, 45 Chestnut Drive for the pool replacement. Any questions, commissioners? No, um, I'll make the motion um, for a negative three finding and uh, the order of conditions to be met on. Uh, so this is going to be, a, we'll, we'll issue a determination of a applicability um, is what we're going to be issuing here. So a motion should be made for a determination of applicability. applicability. Negative three RDA. Yeah, that's fine. That works. A motion to uh, for 45 Chestnut Drive for a negative three RDA. Second. <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded for a negative three determination for the RDA at 45 Chestnut Drive. Roll call vote, please. Declare aye. Curtis aye. Knapp aye. Voris I. Motion passes. Enjoy your swim. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, thank you. Very much. I appreciate you all. Thank you, Kyle. Yes, thank you. Okay. The next RDA is at 180 Colonel Bell Drive. Yep. And I've uh, promoted Owen uh, to kind of speak to this project. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and let you uh, take this one, Owen. It's a pretty cool project. I'll, I'll let you explain to the uh, commission uh, what you're planning on doing. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you. I'm Owen Gray, the Stewardship Manager at Wildlands Trust. 
Um, 180 Coral Bell Drive is uh, the George School, uh, elementary school in Brockton. And uh, Wildlands Trust uh, is uh, going to be constructing an outdoor classroom, uh, outdoor learning space uh, on site at the school uh, in partnership with Manamid Inc. Um, so I'm here because we are uh, one of the features uh, as part of this outdoor classroom is um, a sitting circle. So we have a uh, general classroom space with picnic tables on lawn, uh, but then also a uh, area, you know, kind of tucked away off the path in the woods um, under a nice uh, Norway maple. Uh, but yes, as you see in the photo, uh, the idea is we're going to just uh, you know, clean this area up a bit and put down, uh, bring in stumps, uh, large tree stumps from offsite. Um, for log seating for the students. Uh, but one of the large problems here is this uh, uh, pretty good size asphalt dump, uh, which is within the wetland buffer. Um, so we have um, communicated with DPW, who has uh, volunteered to uh, remove the asphalt um, pending approval. And uh, after that, uh, we would. Uh, you know, install our sitting circle for the students. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. Owen. How many seats in the sitting circle? 25. Wow. Nice. nice. Yep. That'll be really neat. Yeah, it, it's a very exciting project. And, uh, yeah. I hope once it's completed, you all get a chance to go over and check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. so here's like kind of a, a view of the school, just kind of give a perspective of where this is. Um, as Owen said, like this little shed here is uh, kind of where part of the existing outdoor classroom currently exists. There's some picnic tables here. There's a path that kind of follows this way uh, and then kind of cuts back up this way. And so the, the area that's marked with the X is the approximate area of the, of, the, of the sitting circle site that they're proposing. And you can see it is, uh, you know, uh, nearby. Uh oh, you just wrote a couple of mapped wetland resource areas here. So past and so it's, the, the area is already degraded. And in fact, by removing the asphalt, we're going to uh, better the, uh, the area around the wetland anyway. We're, we're going to have more infiltration there. Uh, and so I, I think that this is kind of a net positive for, for the site. Um, and this is kind of like, you know, the idea, oh, here, here you go. This mm -hmm. is a kind of the area that I was kind of referring to that has the picnic tables. And there's just a path. It, it, it's maybe, I don't know, um, 60 feet, you know, down, down this yeah. path to where this, this sitting circle is going to be. So um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a pretty cool development. Uh, it's going to get a lot of use hopefully uh, from the, the elementary school kids. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm, I can uh, share with you my recommendations um, if, mm -hmm. if there aren't any questions from the commission. No. Okay, um, so uh, I am recommending that we issue a, a negative three determination for this project subject to the following conditions. Um, so erosion control shall be installed at the limit of work to protect the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, the gathering circle shall be stabilized immediately following the removal of the asphalt and any and any earth grading that is required. And then the freestanding log bench uh, seats shall not be treated with the water sealing stain uh, on site like right there. Um, and that's kind of it. I did want to just kind of have a conversation with you, Owen, about what the stabilization actually means uh, for this site. I know uh, this is going to be shaded and, and trying to get like any sort of seed to kind of uh, take hold and, and really get established there is going to be tough. So I just wasn't sure what your what your thought was. Do you want to, is your plan to maybe put like mulch down or what, what are you kind of envisioning for the ground cover uh, in this area underneath uh, the sitting circle? We, we were thinking uh, possibly rough cut wood chips, um, just to, to, yeah, like you said, a uh, ground cover. Um, we, we've not necessarily, uh, we're, we're certainly not going to leave it bare, uh, as that would not uh, be effective long term. So uh, I think rough cut wood chips will be the, uh, the solution there. Yeah, and I think that would be appropriate. Yeah. I was just curious okay. to what you were thinking. Yeah. All right, great. And we'll Thank be you. using them uh, in other locations on site. So, 
Yeah. It's exciting. It is. Yeah. Any questions, anyone? I would entertain a motion then for for um, um, to making a negative three determination for the RDA at 180 Colonel Bell Drive. I make a motion to issue an RDA negative determination at 180 Colonial Bell Drive, which includes the conditions outlined by the agent. Mm -hmm. I second the motion. Motion has been made and seconded. Um, roll call vote, please. Speaker aye. Curtis aye. Map aye. And Boris aye. Motion is accepted. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Mr. Gray. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, the next RDA is 153 Linwood Street. Is anyone uh, here? From yeah, uh, David McDonald he is here to speak to this. I can give a little bit of background here. So uh, this is another one that came before me uh, just as a building permit. Um, and uh, there's a there's an existing raised deck that is proposed to be uh, to be removed. And then they're planning on building a new uh, enclosed room that's going to be attached to the house rather than an open deck in, in the same spot. It, and this one's going to be raised as well. Uh, there's an existing concrete pad underneath the raised deck. Um, there is no plan to, to remove the concrete pad. They're gonna have to uh, chisel out and replace the, the support beams, but that's all gonna be within the, the context of, or within the, the limit of the existing concrete pad. Um, the uh, wetland is, is, is uh, the wetland resource area is on the far side of the property. It's around the 190, it's like 90 feet away uh, from, uh, from the proposed work area. So it's, it's, the resource area is fairly far away, um, but they've uh, applied for an RDA uh, to get approval uh, to, to do this construction work. Um, David, do you have anything else to kind of add to, to give context to the commission on this project? I've got some photos I can share at least well maybe David is figuring out his mic so let me do that all right so um so th this this garage is not what they're planning on doing but beyond this is just kind of showing you the woods in the back of the yard so beyond this woods at fairways is actually where the wetland is so there's a there's a there's a pretty large distance so I'm just going to pivot around um to the right so, you know so this is this is the area that they're going to be working in uh obviously they're going to clear out all this the stuff down here underneath the deck uh they're going to be tearing out this deck and, and these um these support beams are going to be replaced with new support beams and so they're going to have to like remove those and kind of work on the concrete around there but there is no plan to actually remove the existing concrete pad outside of uh the work to uh to put new support beams in and then they're going to have like uh, this will this will be an enclosed room addition to the home, uh, is is the plan, um, and that is that's basically it. So I can read my recommendations if there are any questions or if oh, David's got a hand up now. All right, David. Mr. McDonough. We can't hear you if you're speaking. David, are you there? Well, and David, you can always maybe try to type in the chat if your mic isn't working. I don't see anything. Okay. Well, I can just move forward with my recommendation then. Um, so I don't think that there's really going to be any uh, impact long term to the the, the BBW. Um, there's just a, a very large distance here. So I'm recommending that we issue a negative three determination subject to the following conditions. Uh, and that is those are uh, the construction and stockpiling materials shall be placed outside of the 50 foot buffer zone um, to the to the wetland resource area and erosion controls uh, shall be installed at the limit of work prior to construction. And I think uh, I think that basically covers us. 
Commissioners? Oh, did I hear David? <laughs> Any questions at all? No. no? I entertain a motion then to um, issue a negative three determination for the RDA at 153 Linwood. I make a motion to issue a three determination uh, at RDA at 153 Linwood Street, along with the conditions, uh, uh, along with the conditions the agent has just spoken about. I'll second that motion. The motion's been made and seconded to um, issue the negative three determination for the RDA at 153 Linwood. Um, a vote, on, a roll call vote, please. Be cry. Curtis, aye. Sarifa? Aye. We're aside. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is um, RDA at 940 Belmont Street. I believe that's at the VA. Some yes, this is at the VA. Um, and so uh, this is this project uh, Scott's uh, here to represent. Um, Scott, okay. thank you for your patience. It's been a long one. You're the last two items on the agenda. So thank you for sticking around. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Fay. Um, so this is an Good RDA evening. filing. Oh, I'm sorry, Scott. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kyle, for your time. Uh, Madam Chair, Commission members, good evening. Uh, Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering. Uh, as Kyle started to say, I'm uh, here representing the VA hospital, uh, a project kind of right in the middle of the VA hospital. It, it's uh, it's really a, a, a beautiful portion of the of the campus that they have. There's a, an existing pond called Spadea Pond that we're before the commission probably close to 10 years ago to get permitted. And uh, there's a beautiful boardwalk that goes around. Uh, goes around the pond. Uh, they have a, a beautiful fence around it. Uh, the uh, the clients at the VA hospital actually go there at lunchtime and do fishing off of the off of the deck. There's some observatories, there's there's fish, there's turtles. It's it's really a, a pretty cool place. And uh, as part of permitting that pond, we uh, we did a bunch of work with LEC again back in the day to to kind of create a a meadow situation where we uh, have a, a large area adjacent to the pond where there is no mowing allowed at all, uh, just to uh, increase the the habitat value of the area. And uh, to go along with that, there's just a few clusters of trees on the outside of the pond. Uh, there's uh, birch trees that are there. There's about four clusters of trees, and then there's maybe four or five individual trees. And uh, what the VA is hoping to do is just to do some pruning of the trees, not cutting the trees down, just your typical everyday pruning. And the reason we have to file uh, with you folks is the, the Wetlands Protection Act allows us to do pruning if it's more than 50 feet from the wetland. In our case, we're within that, that 50 foot zone. Uh, so because of that, it does fall under your jurisdiction. So uh, we felt like a request for determination of applicability was uh, was justified in this case where there's really no work to the to the ground going on. And uh, as I said, it's it's just to kind of clean things up and and help with the uh, the viewing of the entire uh, the entire campus and specifically the pond, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ferrier. Thank you, um, Kyle. Uh, yeah, no, that was a great uh, summary. Thank you, Scott. Um, I've got some photos up here. You can kind of see the meadow. The the, the no mowing allowed is you know there are signs here that. Anything back there is 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 always going to be in kind of that meadow area. Um, so here just kind of gives you a kind of a feel for or you know what what Scott was talking about there. Mm -hmm. So um, you know I did a site visit and um, yeah I, I guess I can just move on with the recommendation. I, I, generally speaking, you know I, I agree with Scott that you know uh, this isn't you know the pruning of these trees isn't going to negatively impact the wetland resource area itself. Um, so I can just go ahead and I, I get, unless there are any questions from the commission, I will just go ahead and, and issue my uh, my recommendations. Um, what kind of equipment will they be bringing in to do the pruning, or is it hand pruning? It's it'll all be hand pruning. It's there's nothing significant, you know, one inch one inch branches for the most part. Okay. Well, I believe that was in your recommendation as well, right? Yeah, that, that is part of the recommendation as well. So yeah, we got that covered. 
All right, well, I, I, if nothing else comes up, I'm gonna go ahead and just read this. So I do recommend that we issue a negative three determination subject to the following conditions. Uh, the tree pruning shall be done by hand and no heavy machinery, machinery shall cross the existing limit of the lawn into the delineated wetland area. Um, and then I also recommend that we uh, issue a positive 2B determination uh, stating that the boundaries of the following resource areas are not confirmed uh, by this determination, and that's the bordering vegetated wetland. Okay, I entertain a vote then. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, entertain a motion, please to issue a negative three determination and a positive two B determination for the RDA at 940 Belmont uh, for the tree pruning area. I make a motion um, to issue a negative three determination and positive two B uh, along with the um, conditions outlined by the agent for 940 Belmont Street tree pruning project. My second. Motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Beekler, aye. Curtis, aye. Map, aye. And Voris, aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Mm -hmm. Now, were you going to finish up, right, Mr. Faria, with our? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Pleasant Street Notice of Intent. Yes. Uh, thank you. Again, Scott Faria, Holmgren Engineering. Uh, here for Pleasant Street Notice of Intent, we this is, I believe, the third meeting we've had. We had a, a good discussion about the project at your last meeting. Uh, we had a couple of review letters from Beta. The last one, uh, the biggest concern was uh, the proximity to the to the river and the issue of groundwater and the, the fact that we had not conducted any test pits. So Beta requested that we dig a test pit just to ensure not only that the basement would be out of the groundwater, but also the infiltration system we had proposed to handle the increased runoff from the roof, that that would be adequately out of the groundwater. Uh, so we did go out a few weeks ago and, uh, and, and dug a couple of holes. We encountered groundwater at elevation 126. Our basement floor is at elevation 130. So where our basement is four feet above the groundwater. Uh, so it, it, it really takes care of all those issues beta had. Beta also brought up, uh, you know, the the fact that we may need a dewatering plan and excavating the foundation. And as I said, this shows that we're going to be four feet above the groundwater, so we really don't have any uh, any issues anticipating any dewatering issues, uh, any wet basements, anything like that. So I I think that was the uh, the biggest issue that we needed to resolve. Uh, we submitted revised plans that had that information on it, and I uh, hopefully that will take care of everything, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Was was there something that was um, suggested by Beta about um, sump pumps? No? I think that was no. I think the question was whether it would be needed or not if the basement was going to be into or close to the groundwater. Yeah. Okay. So that's because of the four feet. That's exactly. Yeah, okay. we feel pretty safe with that, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Kyle. Yeah. Do you have any um, questions or, or at least? Sure. So I'll, I'll take point on this one, I guess. Um, so yeah, I've reviewed the, the notice of intent and the, the most recent plans that, that uh, Scott submitted uh, in response to Beta's uh, peer review comments. Um, everything looks to be in order. Uh, all the questions, all, well, all the information that the Beta requested, uh, they were able to provide, um, and uh, and they were, you know, and they were satisfactory information. Uh, and all, all the all the you know all the requests uh, modifying modifying the plans uh, have been made. Um, so I think that uh, my recommendation would be to to close the hearing and issue an order of conditions uh, with the following special conditions. So uh, no vegetation clearing should occur prior to the general pre-construction meeting. And then, as uh, Scott kind of talked about already, but uh, should dewatering be required, the contractor shall submit a dewatering plan to the Conservation Commission or its agent for review and approval prior to its implementation. Um, excavation for the infiltration system shall be observed by an agent of the city to confirm design assumptions. Upon the completion of work permanent Brockton Conservation Commission, limit of work do not remove marker shall be installed every 25 feet along the approved limit of work. Um, and then the applicant will need to, you know, uh, get, per, you know, they'll have to run by the type of uh, marker uh, before they, they install them. 
And then finally, uh, no herbicides or pesticides are to be used within the project area at the site, um, and that shall remain in effect in perpetuity. My only question, too, was, uh, uh, Mr. Ferrier, uh, the last meeting, I think, I had asked if that there was a, like a maintenance schedule on checklist on your stormwater packet. Um, and I I saw that you um, the, the actual stormwater maintenance uh, proposal came through, but there wasn't um, a checklist about what, like how often it would be done and exactly what would be done when. It, it said on the packet that it was page six of the packet, but there was no page six. I just didn't know if you have like an actual like schedule. It's always good strategy to call for page six and not give you page six, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, I do have one in, in again, it, it it just fell off the copy, Madam Chair. I, I can submit that to Kyle first thing tomorrow morning, Madam Chair. I apologize for that. I would be appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Anyone else have any recommendations? No. So I would entertain a vote then to close the hearing on uh, Pleasant Street. I make a motion to close the the vote on Pleasant Street to family construction. I second the motion. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to close the hearing. Um, roll call vote, please. Speaker aye. Curtis aye. Map aye. And Voris I motion is carried. No. Thank you very much. Okay, that's to close. And now to, now to issue the order of conditions with the conditions that were proposed by Agent Holden. We don't have any negatives or positives I gotta do, right? Nope. No, 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 this is just special straight conditions. Up, straight up permit. Right. Straight up permit. Okay. <laughs> I make a motion to <laughs> issue an RDA for Pleasant uh, Order of Conditions. Oh, order sorry, of order of conditions. Sorry. Okay, let's do it again. I make a motion <laughs> to issue an order of conditions for Pleasant Street and to at uh, two family construction. I second the motion. Yeah. Okay, so the motion has been made and seconded to issue an order of conditions for the two family construction on Pleasant Street. Um, roll call vote, please. Speaker aye. Curtis aye. Matt aye. And Voris aye. Thank you very much. Mr. Ferry, have a wonderful night. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, can I just have one second just to ask a question and perhaps a request? Uh, of course. And, and I spoke to Kyle about this, and it, it's somewhat self serving, but I, I thought I'd at least bring it to your attention. Uh, you know, the, your last three agendas have been lengthy in, in numbers, at least. And, in a few hours long, and, and I certainly appreciate you folks volunteering your time, and this wouldn't help you guys out at all. You're still going to be until 930, but is there any way you could consider putting the enforcement orders last as opposed to letting, I, I guess to be fresh, the guys that have done something wrong go first, and us guys that are doing it right go last? Uh, just, just wondering if, you know, if we could turn the tables and have the the new filings for us in, in the enforcement orders last just to, to help us out. Typically, our clients have, as the previous case uh, for the cemetery had, you have an, an engineer in an attorney waiting, you know, for three hours at four or five hundred dollars an hour. It gets expensive uh, for that's our clients trying to do the right thing. So, yeah, if that's a good point. It, all, it could be juggled. Uh, I think the rest of my uh, my colleagues would feel the same way, Madam Chair. I think that's a very good point. I'm sure we can talk about that. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I appreciate all you guys do. And thank you for your time. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We still have two utility notifications. Uh, very quick, though. More of, okay. more of an update for the commission. Go. Okay. So, uh, so moving on to agenda item number 23, the Eversource Row 6. Uh, so this is uh, a utility notification that, that's already come before the board, uh, but I did get a notification from them that they are like amending uh, their plan. Basically, there is a tree uh, that is uh, needs to be taken down because it, it's in danger of falling and, uh, and and landing on some power lines. So um, the tree is just off the road. Uh, it, it's it's still exempt. 
Um, you know, as far as uh, work, you know, utility work, it's exempt uh, from the Wetlands Protection Act, but they're just notifying us and they're notifying you that they're going to be taking this tree down. And so that's what that agenda item is. Uh, at least do you have any comments? No, no. Um, it, from my understanding, it's just something that they, they won't be, you know, removing the stump or anything. It's just kind of cutting it down so it doesn't interfere with the actual, you know, lines, the electric, electrical stuff. Um, so it's it's something that, that can happen under the Loans Protection Act. Um, and, you know, no concerns on my end either. So I think it's okay. appropriate. Good. Thank you. National Grid? Um, yeah, and then finally, uh, last month in the June meeting, uh, this uh, utility not notification came before the board. Um, the board requested that Beta kind of look into this and see if uh, an RDA was required for, for this. Um, and Beta kind of, uh, they had some questions uh, about this utility notification. So uh, they relayed those questions to me. I really relayed those uh, questions to the, uh, the, the public utility. Uh, they were able to provide us uh, or provide beta with with all the information that that beta mm -hmm. was re requesting, and the beta determined that uh, you know everything uh, looked good, and uh, uh, you know there was no RDA. An RDA would not need to be uh, filed because everything looks good and it's exempt uh, according to the Wetlands Protection Act. Yep. Yeah. They basically just provided some more specification of of the exact areas, um, and then you know provided uh, details relating to erosion controls, just just to make sure that all those things were covered. So, um, yep. So that's that's all good. Thank you for all your good work. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. And and that's all it. Right. I think that's a, it. We hear a motion. A motion to close the meeting at nine twenty five p.m. <laughs> I uh, second the motion. <laughs> Very good. Good. And I do think that Scott's um, uh, idea of flipping the, the agenda is not a bad one at all, especially anything that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank right. you. Awesome. See you next month. Have a good right. night. Bye bye. Have a good night, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye. bye. bye.